I was gonna say we're kind of kicking ass on that. We one. are, and oh, and it's August twenty fourth. Uh, yeah, we're in Payson, Utah. Yeah, but August twenty fourth. Do you know the significance of that day, Mom? It's almost. It's pretty much Christmas. It's pumpkin spice latte day. Oh, that's right. I didn't actually. I didn't even know that. I didn't know that until I saw Instagram this morning. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Um, they have pumpkin awesome. spice latte came out. I think last or earlier this week at Dunkin' Donuts, and then at today Starbucks? at Starbucks. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh! And so yeah, passing it. There's so many people in line. It was crazy. I'm just I like, do like pumpkin no spice lattes. <sighs> I do not. I know. Are there gingerbread one? It's so good. Is so it? It's a really good like alternative. And so many people last week. Thank you for commenting. A lot oh of people gosh, were like, yes. I like allspice. Yeah, I like allspice and just like the nutmeg and mm-hmm. the gingerbread flavors and stuff. But pumpkin spice just doesn't do it for everyone. You know, I, yeah, there's a, there's several people that it's either you do or you don't. Yeah. You either like it or you don't. And Eric I doesn't it. know because he's never tasted it. But he's oh. like vehement, vehemently opposed to the pumpkin spice latte lifestyle. That's sad. No, it's like you're not living, honey. For all we know, he would like get some, fall in love, and buy a pair of UGG boots himself. So he would if he. He's would. just missing out on that experience. He's totally, totally is. But whatever. Yeah. So happy pumpkin spice latte day. Happy yeah. to you guys as well. I hope you're enjoying hot beverages. But that means it's fall. It's pretty much Halloween right now, oh, and I'm so excited happy. for it. I took pictures yesterday or the other day, and I put fall leaves in my picture, and I was or like, you're just like. This is this is me. I'm loving this. Yes, oh it was gosh. great. It was great. So yeah, cause we've had a little bit of stormy weather, so oh we're like gosh. tricking ourselves and be like, it's October. I, we had some pretty pretty gnarly rainstorms yeah. out here in Utah. So the wind and it I was. Took, I took a day or two off just to enjoy it from home. So what? How has your week been? Speaking of which. Well, I say I've been staying at home or for some of the week, which I have, um, but not to relax. To it's, work. Oh my god, it's almost time for our Comic Con, which is um, Salt Lake City Fan X. And, um, is that what it's called now? It's not called Comic Con? No, there's a whole lawsuit and oh. all stuff like years ago. And it's like, there's that. only ones that can call it a comic book convention. It's like, oh my gosh. Fine. I, <laughs> I still call it Comic Con. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I actually have, because every year we get like, we try to get VIP. Because honestly, the convention in Utah, it's like, in California, it's like, over a thousand dollars for like general admission for the weekend and Utah it's like two hundred dollars for VIP for the whole weekend I'm like we'll save up for that that sounds deal. great that's a great deal. deal and so we actually have some of the original t-shirts that came with the VIP passes that actually say comic-con on them oh so they they actually used the name and mm-hmm. everything. so oh, I'm wow. like ooh, we got the original swag we know what's up um, but yeah we have it's almost like a month from today or yesterday that it's gonna be the day, and I'm so excited. We're actually being sponsored in a booth this year, so. Um, oh, nice! What, yeah. booth, what booth is it? It's um, Pop City. They do Funko Pops. They uh, they're up in the Sandy Mall, so about 40 minutes north of us, and they're sponsoring us in a little section. So we're going to be in full cosplay and welcoming people in, and like we have our own designated area, and so we get like a couple little perks here and there. But we're not getting paid. We're just really like. Like movie cool stars. friends. I feel super cool. I'm That's like, awesome. Lie. Yeah. I'm like, I'll do it for breathe. Cool. But no, the the guy in charge, Mark, he's great, and we just always love seeing him. We met him when he was doing like a charity fundraiser, and we were able to like uh, really invest in it that year. And so we just got talking, and we've just known each other for a couple of years now because of that from Comic Con. And so this year we're doing. Um, the other mother from Coraline. So Eric's going to be the bell dam because we always do gender swap roles. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be Mr. B, but, you know, a female version. And I decided to make, like, a circus tent for my for a dress. That's going to be so cool. But it's like a ringmaster's dress. And I'm like, I can't find anything online. And so finally I'm just like, I'm going to have to make it from scratch. I Why not? I am so expert at my sixth grade sewing class. Heck Yeah. The bean bags that I sewed and I the still have pants. them. <laughs> and I the still... pajama pants. That's right. They turned out right. Yeah, they turned out. They they, they, they were wearable. It's a straight stitch. Nothing they were fancy. Pants. I'm making everything in my cosplay from scratch. That's really cool though. That's ambitious. Oh my gosh, I was up till two thirty doing like ruffle panels. So are you making the bodice too or just <clears throat> a skirt? Um, what am I doing? It's mainly the skirt piece. I bought a Ringmaster coat jacket thing, and mm-hmm. I, I just cut a big section of, of it off yesterday, and I'm attaching different things to it, um, but we're going to have lights in my dress, because what it oh is, it's gosh. basically like a big 
hoop skirt dress, mm -hmm. but the front panel is cut out, and um, and the hoop skirt like underneath has that cut out already. And I'm building a stage in my skirt. I believe that. And um, I'm and I'll show you guys in a little bit. But I'm making mice for it as well, and I made a rat, and he's gonna go under a top hat on my head. That's all gonna be connected via magnets, and. <laughs> It's so much work. I have so much left to do. That's actually what I'm doing when I when I leave today as well. But it's crunch time, and I've learned a lot. I haven't had to do a lot of unpicking, which is great. That's good. I was because so it's about that. is it just a, are you just making up the pattern or did you get a pattern? Um, I got basically a hoop, uh, not a hoop skirt. No, for the mice. I'm sorry. Oh, for the mice. Oh, you mean you haven't been haven't had to unpick your sewing? Yeah. Okay. Which I'm like. Pro, that's absolutely good. pro. Yeah. So that's what I've been doing a lot of, and I'll um, be able to show people on my. I've been taking video as I go along, and I mean I've never spent so much money on like ribbon in my life. And Ribbon's not cheap though. Oh my gosh, when you get it cut by the yard, mm -hmm. and it's like specialty ribbon, I'm like, okay, I can make these by hand by like doing tiny little ruffles and like stitching them that way, and I'm like, no, or I no, could just buy them no, for like you them. know this amount of money that just I've never like just more than the actual fabric cost. I'm like. Oh yeah. Well, when you need lots of it, oh it my can, god, it can I'm add like, up. Well, I made I I, I uh, got what is it? Tool. I got probably uh -huh. like thirty five yards of tool. Oh my god. Because yeah. it makes like eight feet of once you scrunch, once it, you together. scrunch it together. <laughs> but it's so fluffy. bad. Um, that I don't even know that I'm using it anymore. I have so many different things that I'm like looking into with it. But so I scrapped that idea a little bit. A lot of it, you know, thirty five yards worth of it, but. Mm. I have that for other stuff now on hand because right. now I'm a sewist. You can sew. Can you use it. Do it. Um, but yeah, so I, I basically just have to attach everything today and then make my stage. So that's what my week has been. It's been doing my Coraline doing. Advents and then doing that. So that's and getting great. some sweater pre-orders ready. That's good. Yeah, because it's sweater season. It's so sweater season. Oh, I, I was well, I mean, it's still pretty damn hot outside yes. when it's not raining. But that's what, oh, I know. But that's when you have to, like, prep everything. Like, when it's still hot outside so that you can wear the stuff when it's colder. So it's, yeah, like, it's yeah. all finished by I then. I know. So. It's true. I've actually, speaking of autumn, I'm finishing up my autumn boxes. Ooh. The, the cozy autumn boxes that I'm sending. I always love the boxes that you make. They're fun. They're so and good. this one's a little different. It's, it's, a. Uh, it's minis, but it's 20 minis, but they're in sets. They're not in, I'm not individually wrapping them. Mm, okay. So they're not like surprise. You don't open them at one every day. Okay. And then they get 10 stitch markers, which I've been working on finishing. And they're so up. good. And they're I've, so fun. You've been like gifting me all of them. Yeah. When <laughs> so I make I'm one, like, I'm like, I made one for you. I made extras that I may put in the shop. Okay. Uh, but I only made a few extras because they do take a lot of time. They take so much more time yeah. than I thought. They do. But I mean, with everything that you have to do with them and, and glazing them and everything. So I, I, love I, so I really enjoy it. Just wait until you get into like the resin part of it. I don't know if I'll, I don't know if I, I, I back some of my charms with resin oh. or like earrings and stuff with That's resin so that they are more durable. Mm -hmm. um, now, I didn't when I first started, but there's some that are like a little bit more fragile that I'm like, okay, we're going to back you with resin so that That's a good idea. you yeah. don't break. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, they're addicting. But how's your week been? That's what I've been doing. That's what you've been doing. And I've been making some myself striping, which takes a lot of time. Oh my gosh, yeah. But it's, so, I don't know why it's so fun. I've been making some tutorials. I put one out on my yeah, Instagram, I've been part one. Yeah, the bit to yeah, part see two, the rest of it. Part two, I've got it, I've got part two filmed. I've just got to put it together in a reel. Okay. Um, and then there'll probably be still be a part three. Because uh, there's a lot of steps. There's a lot, yeah. It's a lot more like labor intensive and time consuming. Than well, and even I with, even realized even with regular yarn, not self striping. There's a lot of steps with the prep. Oh yeah, you know, and and all the stuffs. So I'll get that out. But that's been my week. Yeah, next week I think I'm going to be jumping into full on wool and folk prep. Uh, finish getting prepped mm -hmm. for that. Well, because mm -hmm. there's a few patterns I know I'm releasing for it. I'm hoping you release your sock patterns there. Oh, I yeah. want to knit them. I'll be releasing, by the way, my Arach Arachnotobia, Arachnotobia sock, which thing. I should have brought it to show again, but it's got spiders on it. Oh, we all know. We're all and obsessed now. I've, well, it's been hard to write, as you know. Uh, I'm going to set a deadline for that for next week. On Friday, right? Next Friday, yes. So uh, that will be, I don't even know what date that is. Is that September? Let's see, today's the 24th. Oh 
31st. It'll be the 30. It'll be the first. It's almost October. It's almost October. It'll be September 1st. Oh, that'll be so good. Yep. So I'll release it September. That way people have two months if you want to do it for Halloween. Mm -hmm. Um, And I'll make some more of the self-striping that goes with it. I was going to say, are you going to make kits for it? Yes, but I don't think I'm going to. I'm not going to. I don't think I'll continue to make them into the ball. I know aesthetically they're just so great to look at the are, ball. They are. I so actually hate knitting from the ball. Really? So, uh huh. I prefer to cake it up. Even when it's in the ball, That's I always take it up. So That's good to know. Instead of like creating that headache for yourself, yeah, just I know might some give of people us the don't choice. like it in the ball. I might give the choice, mm-hmm. but I may start, I may charge extra for the ball. For the ball, because it does take an extra. I don't, I don't think I know any self stripers that don't charge a little bit extra for having it in a okay. golf stuff or ball or whatever. Yeah. I, it's fun. I mean, it looks good, I think. Oh, yeah, but it's pretty. I, putting it in the skein is so way much, fast. So much. It's work. way fast, but then, you know, to put it in the ball is literally takes like 25 minutes mm-hmm. per ball. So I it, I just don't have the time to keep doing that unless people want to, you know, pay a little extra. Then that's fine. Oh, yeah. But I'll get those together, and then they I'll put together some kits for it. Yeah. It's going to look so good. It's going to so be fun. I'm so excited to see this. Do you think you'll have enough to bring to Woolen Folk, which is coming up? Um. Yeah. I think I'm going to I'm gonna try to make some, like I said, not in the not in the no. Gobstopper balls, but I'll yeah. make the skeins. Um, I'll bring, I only have four self-striping colors, and I'll probably bring, like, I'm going to try to bring, like, ten of each. Okay. Not a ton, but a few of yeah. them. Yeah. Uh, because it's, they're all, well, except for one. The Summer Fling is bright colors, but the other three are more. This one? Yeah, this is the, this is bright colors, but my other three are more fall subdued colors. It's so hard not to break yourself out of those colors, even when it's them. hot outside. Those I are my like, soul. That's my soul animals. Oh, my what God. What do you call it? Spirit animal. Your sp- it's your spirit Autumn colors. is my spirit colors. It's the color of your soul. Totally is, but. Yeah, no, I feel that. And, uh, like, even when I'm surrounded by, like, bright colors and stuff. I feel like bright colors make me depressed. <laughs> Sometimes really? it's just well, it like depends, yeah. I don't know. Maybe like when I'm knitting with bright colors, like I have something here that I knit with um, that was actually more okay because I'm like, this is Halloween, and just kept like telling myself that. But I find bright colors sometimes can be exhausting for me that's unless I put something dark in there. Well, yes, yes. And so autumn but is you know, always just like, oh my soul, my soul. Like even if it's light autumn, dark autumn, whatever. Okay. Even if it is bright autumn. Do you do the same thing when you're dyeing yarn? Like if you're dyeing yarn, and you're like, there's something, I, there's just something missing. Yep. It's too drab, or it it just. If it's needs. too bright, I put something on it to tone it down. Yeah. Every single time. It's I like, have a hard or time. if it's or if it's too like dark and bland. It's like, man, I'll just put, I'll just put a, a little bit of. Literally, that's persimmon for me. The dye or persimmon. Bright, or like chartreuse or yep. something. It, just to, to kind of break up the mm-hmm. colors. Tobacco. That's, that's a good one. That's totally me. Yep, I usually I either it. go for like saffron color or persimmon. They're so, so great. I love They're persimmon. They're so good for speckling. Mm-hmm. And they, they, yeah, they, they bring out so many different colors. Like I'll, I'll be showing this later, but. Um, I do like that as one well, a but lot. so this is my going on an adventure color. And I'm like, oh, it's so boring, it's so boring. So I put some persimmon in there, and then when you see it knit up, it's, it's so just pretty. Like, it's just a good pop. It's very against autumnal. I I know. I don't know <laughs> why, but it, this it, is a spring color, and I'm like, it reminds me of acorns some for some reason. And acorns really? are not orange, and acorns are not green. They are but I like love a, it. They're like a burnt sienna, though. It, they are. With my color knowledge. Look at you. They're like a burnt sienna and that. That's like a Crayola color, isn't it? Burnt, yeah. I think burnt I think sienna. So. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that's that. how old I am. So, um, but Woolen Folk is coming up and we'll have, definitely have some fall colors there. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm starting so. to like wrap my head around um, the different kits I'm going to be bringing because I, I want to bring a, thank you guys for your feedback about the Polworth because um, we're yes. here for it. Yes. And knowing that you guys really like the Polworth base as well, it's just like, okay, okay, we're going to make that a priority. Or at least I am. I don't know what you're doing. I have Paul Worth. I'll be bringing Paul Worth too. And for those of you that don't know, Paul Worth is, it's made from a sheep that is 75% merino, 25% Lincoln sheep. And so you get this soft but durable Mm -hmm. wool. It's not as soft as merino. It's not soft, uh, but it doesn't pill as fast as merino. Mm -hmm. And it grips itself. So it's it's so great. A little scratchier. Slightly. Mm -hmm. It's not scratchy. I don't think it's a scratchy wool, but you can tell the difference. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if you were to put it, like, next to a BFL or something, you could be like, oh, yeah, Polworth is so much softer. Mm-hmm. But it's also one of those things with any yarn. The more you wash it, the more you wear it and stuff, the softer it gets over time regardless. I, I always recommend if you're making a sweater for, like, a guy, 
for a man that's going to wear it around and doing, you know, on a regular normal weekend or something, I would do Paul Worth. I would do Paul Worth or BFL. Mm -hmm. BFL. BFL is the only thing that Eric lets me knit for him. Really? Mm -hmm. He likes that a lot. Well, except for, like, I, we talked about the Paul Worth because I have something here that I knit for him that was a gift. And he's like, okay, I can wear that. Yeah, I but made he's obsessed Vaughn, with my BFL sport weight. Paul Worth for the hats. I But Vaughn works out in his shop uh, during the winter, and so I have to triple, hold three of the DK weight. To make his hats. Well, isn't he the guy, like, what, three years ago that he was like, make me something soft. And so you made him a bunch of, like, single ply merino or something? No, I made I made it with mohair. Oh, that's right. Because I'm like, well, that'll be warm. I think I used double Paul Worth with a strand of mohair. Mm -hmm. But he didn't like the mohair as much. He goes, because when I'm eating or, you know, it gets on my hands, and I'm like, tell me sounds about like, it. Sounds like you're, I'm like, like I'm know. fine with that. I know. Because uh, knitting with it can get all in your eyeballs. And oh, my gosh. When I'm wearing it, it doesn't get on anything. But when I'm, or, and when I'm knitting it. It doesn't like get in my eyes oh, or anything, but when I'm dyeing it, oh, dyeing it gets it. I, I can't work, like goggles. Well, and I have to literally. Or I have to be like this when I'm winding it because it'll just be like. I have to clean my sink out before I rinse any other yarn. Yep. I, or I have to do the spin dryer very last. Everything. Yep. I literally like I put paper towels in the spin dryer with it and on top of it, so it's like in its own little cocoon. It's like a filter. Yeah. It you works. You have to because it gets over everything. It gets everything. But the Surrey. Strangely enough, does not. Doesn't do that. Mm -hmm. Doesn't shed as much. Nope. So anyway. I think it does have a longer staple. And I, I, I think the mohair is like, when um, mohair is furry. when uh, the surrey is combed mm -hmm. before processing, I don't think that the mohair is necessarily. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. But so, it which is, is furry. woolen versus worsted spun, I think. Mm -hmm. What? What? What's the matter? I ran out of a ball? Did you just run out of yarn? Did I run out of yarn? What, what the, what the what? Did you? Did you bring some socks? I think I, my dogs are obsessed with my socks. <laughs> I think that ended up being a hiding place. Okay, so speaking of fall and Halloween, oh and which leads to Thanksgiving, which leads to Christmas. It's basically Christmas. Happy New Year. Pretty much Christmas. We just wanted to remind you guys, last time, oh, yeah. or, you know, last chances here, we're running, we're almost out of the... Uh, Christmas at Hogwarts. Advent year calendars, seven. Year seven. Part one. Yep, yeah, we'll have year seven, part two next year. But uh, Tristan is lives. out of them in her shop, and I do have some in my shop still. Mm -hmm. And so we only have a few left. Get those while you can. Those mm -hmm. are going to be 24 minis and one full skein. Yep. And um, you get to pick your house, which Hogwarts house you're in. Yep. And I'm, I'm just, there's so many things in this year. I'm so excited. I really... I've already been like trying to write out names and everything. So we haven't started dyeing them up yet. Not we yet. start doing that generally like September. September. Usually. Yeah. I usually start dyeing my ad or the advents right after uh, I go to Comic Con mm -hmm. or right before. Um, October's just crazy. That's all I know. Oh yeah, because we also we go to like, New York. Well, we spend like three days putting three to four days putting up all of our decorations outside That's too. That's true. I'm gonna start packing for woolen folk like. Tomorrow. Oh, I'm doing that this next week too. Yeah. I already yeah. have. I already have like probably ten or twelve colors that I'm done. Yep, completely yep. done. Me too. So, yep, so. I'm excited about that. So yeah, I'm gonna start doing that, and as soon as I'm done with that, I'm gonna like get ready to start dyeing those colors because there's just so many cool themes in the last year, and I feel like it's really right up my alley because you you talk about like more of the darker things. You do. So it'll be so, so last chance on that. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, uh, I wanted to <sighs> ask you about this sweater that's gorgeous. <laughs> it's beautiful. Okay, uh, I had gone on a. Uh, designing hiatus for a little bit because I think I've talked about it prior some somewhere I don't know if it was in a previous podcast or me online but um I had a tech editor who got swamped and had to let some of her clients down because she had so many great opportunities um working with other designers that would like just increase her level of happiness and mm -hmm. so I was one that she had to let go of and um it had been a while since I got a new uh to get a new tech editor because I was just, math, can you hear me stuttering? Math, <laughs> math. math. Um, I, yeah, I have, I'm, I need to get diagnosed, but I'm pretty sure I have dyscalculia, which is not being able to process even the basic math. Like your, your brain just goes completely just empty. It might be hereditary. I think it, I think it is actually. You know how I am. Oh, I know. I, I can know. do algebra. I can do all I the can't. things if, it, if I have a calculator and I can do it on paper, but I can't it in my head. Even on paper, I'm just like, <sighs> pencil. Hmm. That's about all I process. But 
I mean, it just took me back to my first sweater I ever designed, which was the Find My Way sweater, mm -hmm. where I had 46 or 47 revis revisions of it before that tech editor came in. She's like, do you want to hire me? Do you need some help? I'm like, yes, please. Oh, you were trying to do it by yourself? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah, first sweater, bottom-up cable that I've never done before. I'm going to totally do this. I think we thought back then that we could do it. I'm like, it's just math. It's just numbers. I can figure it out. No. Um, so she came in, she saved me, and basically, like, held my hand through that. And so I felt, like, all this comfort and security. And so getting a new tech editor was such, like, just a that it just a baseline of anxiety that I'm just like, I don't even want to think about it. I don't want to do it. But I did find a new tech editor, and she has been great. Good. And so That's this so is my good. first, like, official sweater design that I've done with her. And other than, so like, pretty. books. I'm so happy. Okay. It's the Nightshade Society sweater. It's themed after... Um, the Netflix show Wednesday. That's so pretty. I love it so much. So Nightshade Society is a secret society in that show. And I have another sweater that I did not bring today because I need to find where it's written up so that I can actually like not make empty promises about designing How many it. notebooks do we have laying around with stuff written in I don't even know where it is. Seriously. Um, but the thing is, I've knit that sweater. This is maybe my third time because I kept losing like where I wrote down the yardages I used. Oh, really? Oh, so that's so hard. So I got my hard. third rendition, and I think I wrote them down. So I'm like, oh, thank God, please. So that one's going to be the Ophelia Hall sweater, which is basically where the iconic um, stained glass window thing is. Oh, pretty. Yeah. So it has, like, stained glass. And anyways, it's not here, so I can't talk, really talk about it. And I don't, that's know gorgeous. I, don't, I don't know if I have the pattern <laughs> or not. Um, but this one ended up just being so perfect. I love it so much. It actually is written for sport weight. Oh, but wow. um, but I, it's mohair too, right? Mm -hmm, I knit two different versions. This one is cropped. The original version is not. It goes down about 15 to 18 inches, depending. Mm -hmm. I think it's 15 inches for the body and then some ribbing. But it does have a split hem. That's really cute as a crop. I don't I wear love, crops very often, but they're I so cute on I you. I love this for a crop. And if I wear it with a dress, which I am, um, it's just, it's so cozy, comfy. But yeah, even in like... The longer version, I knit with my, my newest uh, base, which is my Dragon BFL Sport base. Oh, nice. It's so squishy. I bet. I bet. Oh, it's so good, and it has such great definition. But after I was done knitting it, I'm like, I want to wear this with the dress. <laughs> so Cute. I knit it in fingering white and mohair, and this is my colorway um, called Allergic to Color. Pretty. Which is also... Um, Your mohair's getting on my lip gloss. Sorry. Just saying. That's why you don't wear lip gloss. You just be Man. basic and wear chapstick. Um, but yeah, so this is also from my Wednesday collection that I did in the yard. It's like a dusty, mauve yeah. lavender -y color. Which is fun because there's not a hint of mauve in here or purple or anything. It looks purpley. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm so happy. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing. But I've been like, as I'm like curling myself, sorry. Um, well, it's the yeah. no hair. What are you wearing? Oh, um... <laughs> I'm wearing a really fun shawl that I knit up. Have I? No, I don't think we've talked about this. Um, I love it's, the colors you chose. Oh, my gosh. Oh, thank you. This is called the Monte Camino shawl by um, Espostrico. And, okay, this was so much fun to knit. Really? I'm going to take it off so I can show you. It was so much fun to knit, even though it's, like, a lot of stockinette. So you are purling on one side. But look at this. It's just so pretty. Look, okay, this detail where they put the fringe on. Yeah, it's like macrame. Or the tassels. I know, it is. It is. It's, it's so like macrame. Pretty. And it's huge and squishy, and I love it. And it's made with, um, it's fingering weight. Mm -hmm. And it's, I have ivory, oatmeal, and cardamom. And I do have kits in my shop of these yeah. ones. But the uh, pattern is by Espostrico. And it's the Monte Camino, but it comes in a booklet. If you go to their website, I think you can go to Ravelry, and then it takes you to their website. Um, but it comes in a book of 10 patterns, I think. 10 patterns for like $6. 10, oh. 10 shawl patterns for like 6 bucks. Wow, that's and really good. And this was one of them. There's several in there that I want to knit. But this one was just so much fun to knit. I mean, look at that. Those tassels. It just looks so wearable, too. It is. Um, and you can choose to not put the tassels on if you want. Why would the you tassels not? took almost about four hours and almost a full skein of yarn because they're long. Yeah. So just keep that in mind. And the pattern that they have is one color. I chose to split it up and I put three that. colors just because I get bored. Like, I'm. I really do, too. I, I, your mohair is like. I'm oh, sorry. It's okay. So it's a, it's a, fun, it's a fun knit and. Yeah. 
I do like the colors you chose, though, because they're so... They're so, again, wearable. They are. But, it's yeah, the just... neutral of it, and especially, like, those colors mm-hmm. are great with your skin tone, your palette, everything. Yeah, I love, I mean, I love colors, but mm-hmm. when I go to wear things, I I tend to choose more neutral colors. Mm-hmm. I don't wear, like, bright pinks and bright yellows and stuff like that because I just, I can't pull it off. Um, but I also get a little shy of color, you know? I get that. I don't want to stand out like Stephen West. He does it well. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's his signature. You wearing, can want to do it. Wearing bright colors and stuff. And I am like, well, I'll stay muted. But I like muted. Um, Me too. Yeah. And so this is a, it was a great knit. And it's gigantic. That's what I love. A big, squishy shawl. It's big. It's squishy. It's warm. And it's uh, tangly. <laughs> Trying to get back to where it was. But anyway, you get the picture. Oh, I love so that. I do have kits in there, and, and I will say it's three. It takes about three skeins of yarn, and but if you split it up the way that I do, you'll run out of the cardamom color, this darker mm-hmm. color. Uh, so, but there's plenty. You'll have plenty of these two colors. So, the kit only comes with one cardamom, so you'd have to add one. Okay. That because just because I'm always one to keep things minimal. Um, but anyway. I think it's a great shawl. It's a it. great knit. It's a lot of fun. It's warm. Oh, it's so much fun. It's it beautiful. It makes me want to knit it, even though I know how much purling is involved. There's a lot of purling. I think I'm one of the only people that have issues with purling. But you know what? Purling, you know how I get tension issues when mm-hmm. I'm doing purling? When I purl back on a sock uh, on the heel, Oh yeah. I struggle. But when I'm doing bigger needles, it doesn't. you can't tell. Really? Yeah. Like, you can't tell. You can't tell which where I purled. See, there's no tension difference. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Yeah. And, but my I socks... I usually just feel, knit backwards. I've been doing that. That's what I do on my socks now. I haven't done it in a big project, but I don't think I've made a big project since I've we started I've done it purling. on the Comfort Fade Cardi. We'll have to that's show that I, sometime. That's when I learned how to do it, because I'm like, this is, this is crap. I we'll hate this. To, we'll have to show it sometime. I think I yeah. messed up the camera. Let me just adjust yeah. it slightly. That's better. When I, w- when I was doing something, fixing the sound or something, sorry. Yeah, it was way off. That's okay. Got you. So okay. I recommend it. I re- recommend uh, Espostrico's patterns anyway because they're well done. They have done. a very good, like, simplistic, elegant look oh, to them. So like, it's, it, but it's just beautiful patterns yeah. and well done, well written. So. Yeah, they definitely have a mood and a vibe when they're designing they their do. patterns, and it kind of all just fits together very well i think yeah, yep they do are you um are you working on something you want to talk about right oh now? yeah what do you what do you maybe mean? what is it um it's a sweater i really wanted to use this yarn it's my uh bell colorway it's really pretty thank you i did a whole um summer i usually do summer uh mystery sock sets mystery yarn clubs this last year i did tolkien i think i may still do one or two more months of that like the Hobbit. Yeah, and... I really loved it. Well, there's the new TV show, and I know, I know, people who read Tolkien are be like, no, that's valid. It's like I know, they took characters and themes and they created their own storyline. Did they it. really? I get it. Yeah, it's like well, Tolkien wrote a lot of different like short stories and books and prequels, and mm-hmm. you hear about some of them within the actual like Lord of the Rings books, um, and in the Hobbit, I love they like Hobbit. reference back to like oh, in this mythology of these two lovers and stuff and blah 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 or like the stars are named after these people he has those stories written as well okay yeah and um and so (laughs) wait where was i going oh yeah yeah the yarn club (laughs) like where was i um and so with that i've been really i only did one month of that one and it was this color actually it might be one of my favorite colors of all time it is i don't speak firefly Ooh, that one is really pretty. I love this so much. That I'm, is really I'm in the process then. of knitting something with it too, so I'll show that next week. But it's gorgeous. Um, this so this was a sock set, but it was a mystery club. I also did eh, this color, which is Hobbiton. It was one of the mystery oh, colors that's too. that's pretty too. So most of these I've just like fallen in love with so much. I'm just like, yeah, most of these are in my shop now because I just loved them. Um, so nice. these ones actually go together very very well. They do. Fade-wise. Yeah, most for of, fades. Most of them do. All of the colors that I did for the um, for the mystery knits for the Tolkien Club, most of them actually fade together. That is awesome. So I just did my last one, which was uh, Arwen-themed. I've done Gladriel. But this one was from my summer of princesses. 
And so oh. I did four princesses um, a month. That one's Belle? This one is Belle. That's awesome. And so I wanted to knit kind of like a bookish themed sweater. So it's going to be called bookish. I like it. And I am just in the process. I wanted to make it very wide and short. And it's um, it's DK, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's very squishy. It's very squishy. So this is my fairy tale DK. So it's 100% merino wool. And it's, I'm actually probably going to stop the body after about another inch and then start, uh, I again, I'm going to do a front and back split hem and the back will be longer. And I just wanted a very basic one to just pull over mm -hmm. basically. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I'm cold. I'm reading a book. I'm just going to But that's the best kind for over. like the weekends when you're just curled mm -hmm. up in your pajama pants. Yeah, I want it to fit more boxy-ish, but have like shaping those. in it and have it a little bit more cropped, but it's the high-low hem on the bottom split hem that really just makes it flattering and having it drape in a specific way that creates mm -hmm. just a little bit of a vertical in it, which is very flattering for the female body type. Mm -hmm. And again, it'll have like thinner arms. The arms are going to start instead of right here. They're probably going to start about like right here. So it's just going to be cozy. I'll have to, I just have to say, I know that like wearing sweaters that show your shapeliness is beautiful. Everybody's mm -hmm. shapes. But some days when you're feeling just bloated or you just want to be comfy, you put on something that's big and squishy. Yeah. And I call them my cookie eating it. sweaters. Exactly. And actually, I think they're flattering too. I think th that's the thing. It's like you could eat a flattering. bunch of cookies in this and nobody would even notice because you just look that great. I that's my whole like, you know, philosophy on sweaters is like you want to be comfy, but you want to look good. As like, long as you're comfortable and you are happy with what you you have mm -hmm. on, then uh, f every f swear <laughs> f everybody else. Everybody. Um, no, that that was my whole like that's my plan with this one. Uh, I, I started out with a cardigan, but again purling, and I got really angry. Um, that and happens. So I'm like, I might state this and make it like the bookish cardigan. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, I was thinking about making it like contouring to the body type and stuff. But honestly, I just want to be comfy and cozy when I'm reading books and stuff. So I'd rather just do that. So that's what I'm working on right now. I'll I think probably that's knit great. it up in a couple different colors because this is just a very chaotic color palette now that I've been knitting it. But I, I love think it. it's going to be perfect. You know what? I love it. And, and with all those speckles, but you're rotating skeins. Uh -huh. And so there's no pooling going mm -mm. on. Look at that. I mean, I it's just. When, when we make speckle yarn, I always wonder what it's going to look like knit up. And I do worry about pulling. I worry sometimes, yeah. I do, but uh, I think it's pretty safe when you're rotating skeins. Yeah, I actually alternate every single row. I know I a lot of people too. do every two rows. I've tried that, and, and like, I can I can tell. It creates visible. But it doesn't create pulling necessarily, but it creates invisible lines, lines kind of, and I don't yeah, like that. Yeah, like little shelves. Yeah. Can I just tell you how much I just still, I told you last week, I'm not a green person. I can knit up. I can um, dye up greens all day long, though. Like, they come natural to me. With Blues do not. Blues but greens used to do. not. Blues are starting to come more naturally to me. But blues I always are gravitate hard. to greens. But I, I, and I don't wear greens. A green is not my favorite color. Mm -hmm. I, but for some reason, I love dyeing greens. Because mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just think it goes really well with other colors really well. Like, you know, fall colors. But this combo, Tristan, I would like make that. socks. I don't know if I would make socks. I love looking at it. I know. I just love the way, and I'm, I've been on a streak lately for myself of more subtle mm -hmm. color palettes. It is so hard to make this subtle for me because I, I just overspeckle. How many times have you gone in there and been like, I'm going to make a subtle color, and then I'm like, like oh, this needs a little let's, more, let's, let me put one more, I need to squish it, I need to do, yeah. Recently, thing. I've had issues with that again, I'm like, oh, okay, Tristan, stop. And it's not even that subtle. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's subtle for your style, I yeah, think. Yeah, for me. Yeah, but it's I mean, subtle. it's it's so pretty with these pops of the dark. I actually greens. didn't alternate skeins on this at all either. You didn't? Uh uh. It's just so pretty. Thank I love, you. I'm impressed. I'm gonna move it so you stop getting distracted. I love it. Okay. Um, I want to show something if I can, real quick. I want to see. That's it. not on the docket. Ooh, off like, script. Do you like my court talk? I do. Um, I do a lot. I wanted to show. Oh gosh. Don't mind me putting my arm. If I can find it. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Maybe I won't find it. Oh yeah, I found it. Um, I wanted to get your opinion. I would okay. like to put out, um, I don't know if I'll, okay guys, this is, I'm freestyling right now, okay? Freestyling, I'm freestyle talking. Okay. I have always wanted to do a book, a knitting yes. book, 
of ornaments, of little mini things, because I love knitting mini. Have you okay. guys seen her 12 Days of Christmas things? 24 days. 24 days, sorry. I have like four of them on Ravelry. They are so cute. You but Is the wedding dress one on there? That's not, the yeah, dresses? I do have a wedding. Okay, my favorite one was the year, because I did 24 Days of Sock, mini sock ornaments um, for like, I've done three of those, I think, but mm -hmm. one year I did, I, this was an so ambitious good. year. Oh my God. Someone was like, Will you, are you gonna do D, DK? So I'm like, sure, I can do DK too. But I didn't. Then I'm like, and I'll just do, I'll do garments. I'm not gonna just do socks. So I made like robes. I made a Santa and a they Mrs. Are Santa. So cute. But I wanted to see. I made this little sweater. It was for something that I'm not gonna use for. But um, I wanted to get your opinion. I've always wondered, are these the right size for Christmas ornaments? Okay. That I mean, I think it's a valid question because they are great for Barbie size. Mm -hmm. But are they too big for a Christmas ornament? So, look, if I was going to make a book of Christmas ornaments, would people want them to be smaller? Like, maybe, you know, instead of being this tall, maybe, like, this big. Because this fits perfectly on the little hangers I have. Yeah. You can get smaller hangers. I can't. I yes. did find smaller uh -huh. hangers. Because I, I have a similar thing with my little samples. I knit little sweaters to go with samples. And even with the socks that I make, they're, I made them originally for samples mm -hmm. to take to our Vogue Knitting Life that we did in San Francisco that year. So that I wasn't thinking Christmas ornaments. Yeah. But they work. But they I, work I mean, great. are would it be better to make like what do you think? Shorter? Well, I've actually done both. I have my mini sweater yes, pattern and then do. I have my micro. micro. Mm -hmm. But even your mini is smaller than this one. It's smaller than that. Yeah. That one I actually would put on a wine bottle. That would be cute. Have a little Another thing I wanted to do top. is I wanted to make some cup cozies. Oh, yeah. That were like little sweaters or something. Oh, that'd be cute. Like cardigans that you wrap around and button. Okay. Because uh, you can't do a pullover because the that neck would, would be, be huge. so cute. So you'd have you to You could do, do that on takeaway. Venti. You could. Someone got, uh, Von Stotter, I think, got him uh, like a puffer jacket that goes on beer cans. He doesn't drink beer, but... Um, anyway, put your if you comment down below and let me know uh, what, yeah, I'm, what I'm size, too. like what would be the perfect size. This one's about, I would say, probably four inches tall. Yeah. And I'm wondering if maybe I don't like think it would work on a, on a small tree, but like on a regular, on a regular size tree, I it would think show that would up. work. Because I've done little mittens that were like that big, so but that's you'd want to make the mittens bigger than like tiny. Anyway, I just wanted to show. I wanted to show you this too because it's so damn freaking cute. cute. Look at that. It's a turtleneck. I love that. It's a turtleneck. So, and sometimes when I just want to show what a yarn looks like, this is ivory, then for our shows, this yeah. is the size I would make for our shows. I just think that's perfect. I I'm like tempted on knitting bigger ones for the show, but <coughs> they do take time though. They take so much time. I'm like, this I'm one took a lot of time. Micro. Well, yeah, there's this a little cable take... down the middle. It's adorable. It took, it took some time. But I love it. I think it turned out so cute. I love that. What are you working on, though? Oh, I'm I'm making uh, my same sock I was making last week. Don't be upset. You've been a busy girl. You know. You run a business. I get distracted. Okay, yeah. Okay. I get distracted by doing polymer clay. I've been doing, I've been having to finish up my autumn ones for my autumn box. Yes. So I've been doing a lot of that. Um, but yeah, this is on my summer fling uh, self-striping yarn which is so much fun to make. See, I'm not a bright, I'm not a happy person like that. I'm a, I'm a dark and moody happy person. Mm -hmm. But I really do like those pops of color. Thank you, and then this is my other one. This and one's, that's the kind I like. I still only have one sock for Tristan. I still need you to my, try it on. My toesies are gonna be so cold if you don't finish. Yeah, I know, I can, I can this is the one with the, with the padding on it. Oh, but I'm anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm making. It's just a, it's a, just a pattern I made up in my head that I love. Is it because just knits and pearls? It's, yeah, it's just two rows of knit and then two oh, rows yeah. of, of knit pearl, knit pearl. You were saying that. So it's an easy pattern and it stretches. And so I do a 56 um, cast on with this. But if I was doing stocking it, I would do a 60. Because mm. when you're doing knits and pearls, it's oh, yeah. It'll spreads out more. Spread out a little bit more. So yeah, that's that's what I'm making there. Nice. Are you making anything else? Yeah. You're making other oh, stuff. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, okay. So speaking of earlier, we were talking about my uh, my cosplay that I'm doing. And so with this cosplay, um, Mr. B, he basically is a mouse circus. And oh, so- I haven't seen, uh, is it 
from Coraline? You said? It's from Coraline. I don't yep. think I've seen Coraline. I don't Mom, think you would you would I probably really like, would it. like it. It has a very Nightmare Before Christmas type theme. Because it's the same. It. It's the same. Mm-mm. It's not actually. It's not. I was surprised. Oh. Um, it's not. I actually did include that in my my Tim Burton advent though, because I'm like, I don't care. I love this. It looks looks close enough, right? But yeah, it does actually. Um, yeah, I'm slightly obsessed with it, but okay. So <sighs> we have been really working hard at it, and I decided that I want like 15 mice in my dress because oh I'm doing gosh. the, the stage and the platform and everything and then I want to have some on the outside of my skirt that will be sewing on there as well and I'll probably have like one in my hand that I can present to people but they are going to have these little ornaments or these little uh, instruments. Trumpets and trombones. Well they saxophone. mainly they all have like trumpets and stuff I don't oh think gosh. I see any with the sax. They play instruments yeah. in the show? Well, it's a mouse circus yeah they're well, performers it, they do okay. doodle doodle instead of like oompa oompa Sorry, if anyone has seen the, the movie, you'll... Well, when I I'm think of circus, it. I think of, like, The Greatest Showman. Like, with animals doing tricks. Well, these are the tricks that the animals are doing. They're playing an instrument. They're playing That's instruments. true. That so, it would be a trick. <laughs> so, I'm making little mice. Oh, my gosh. Just and I know. have to... Uh, I got felt, and I'm going to be Those look just like my cat's toys. I almost just bought a bunch of cat toys, but I'm like, no, they all come with cat, and I really Tristan, don't want to be attracting cats. I have... Oh, my gosh. This is so funny. I bought little noisemakers that you put inside baby rattles, but they're they're muted. They're like a just a little. Oh yeah, yeah. That and that's what they make with cat toys too. I might have to have you write that pattern <laughs> okay. so I can make some cat toys. It's pretty easy. I could probably write this one up pretty that's, pretty quickly because I saw a bunch on Ravelry and I'm like, no, it's written for a heavier weight. I just I. We, You're doing great. Thank I you. Mean, that's I wanted beautiful. um. I wanted little knit ones, and so this was like one of my first ones that I made. I changed the pattern a couple of times, and so I made the body a lot bigger. That's so cute. For the rest of them. So these two I knit mm-hmm. yesterday. I'm using Holst Garn oh in the almond colorway, and so it's. Good. I wrote it down. Wait, Holst Garn? What kind is, is Holst it? Holst Garn okay. in the Noble base, and it's the almond color. What's it made out of? Uh, cashmere. It's cashmere? Yeah, it has some cashmere in it, but I think it's just wool. It just says wool and cashmere. I would want to make it out of BFL because Murphy loves BFL for some reason. It makes him drool. My dogs love BFL, too. Isn't that crazy? What is it about it? I don't know. Like, if I, I, I gave him a I scheme. think it's the barnyard smell a little bit because it kind of still does have I a little bit of that. He'll drool. He'll, like, rub Oh, he will, too, him. but, I mean, he just drools in general. He does all so. <laughs> but So I'm making these mice, and there's three here, but I have one more. So I want, like, 15 of them. Holy cow. Do they take very long? Uh, probably like 45-ish minutes. That's not bad. It's not too, too bad. So um, uh, I'm doing that when I'm taking breaks from sewing because your back just starts killing oh, from I'm sewing. Sure. And with how many ruffles I have to freaking do. Because you can't just curl up in a ball like you do with I the haven't shown you this. You haven't seen those, but you really have not seen this. Okay, show me. So in the... Where is it? Oh, it's already on the table. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god. Um, in the show... Or in the movie, um, one of the mice turns into a rat at one point, and it's like the darker side. Okay. Of the mo- you really need to watch it. You need to I read do. it. I do. I think it's oh, by Neil a, Gaiman. There's a book for Coraline too. Oh yeah, yeah. I think it's by Neil Neil Gaiman. Okay. Please correct me if I'm wrong, um, but he's the uh, the guy who wrote like Stardust. The um. Stardust. There's a movie. I don't think I've seen Stardust. Oh my gosh. What's that one about? Have I seen it? Is it old? New? It's a big book to oh, okay. sum up right here. All I can think of is the roller skating. It's very fantastical. Broadway. What's the roller skating? It's like Starlight Express. Starlight right? Express. Okay. That's different. So, but I made a creepy rat. Oh my god, Tristan. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, um, <laughs> let me see it. Okay. Oh my god, look at that. Look at the teeth. I wanted Wait, them to on. be creepy, so I have to finish doing the teeth. And what I did... They just cut little triangles of felt, and then I curled them on each other. Oh my god! And then I sewed it up, and then I sewed it to the top of the mouth. But it's so this awesome. is a heavily, Look heavily modified face. version of. Let's see. Um, this is little mouse in a sweater. If, if you look at, I need some more teeth, please. Well, if you look at the pattern, it's like this cute little mouse in a cute oh little my. sweater. So I heavily modified the mouth. Look at his arms. I think I might put like piping in there. That or is some wire. So, so he's going to be holding a ball. And he's going to be on my head, so I have to build a little platform because Eric's making me a top hat. The top hat is going to um, 
attached to be a magnet. And so there's a magnet hilarious. At the, in the bottom right here. Oh my gosh. And I'm going to be sewing the opposing magnet into my wig or underneath so the So is it a heavy penny. enough magnet? Where's yeah. the magnet at? Is yeah, here? it's a heavy, heavy ass magnet. Could you put them on your fridge like this? Stick them to like... Oh my god, if you put them in, your, in its... Oh my god. <laughs> If you put them in their back like too, you just, oh, so that seriously, if you okay. put them in your back, you could have fridge fridge rats. Oh my god, that would be so <laughs> funny. A bunch of like rats just looking at you like this all day. Refrigerator rats. Like feeding. Hi. Me. <laughs> Did you need the milk? So, um, yeah, I'm going to be probably crocheting little ears to go on the backs of these little flimsy things. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so the teeth are all going to look like that on the other side as well. That's hilarious. I mean, that's the funniest thing. <laughs> And it's a little top hat mm -hmm. made out of felt, too? Uh, yes. Yeah, so there's a couple different felts you can get, and this one uh -huh. is just like uh, the... Like a stiffer the kind. The stiffer kind. Mm -hmm. So I made that real fast. I am so impressed. I am, too. It took a, a little while to do, but yeah. Check out the pattern. It is by Claire Garland, and she may be like so opposed to like how this turned out. Because it didn't have the teeth and stuff on it? It didn't have the mouth even open. It's supposed to be an adorable little little mousy and he's in a little sweater oh my but yeah I changed a lot because honestly I'm not gonna lie I could not understand a lot of the pattern is it a because I don't well I don't do a lot of toys and so the construction's oh, mm -hmm. a little like yeah so I'm like okay I'm gonna play with this and then under here especially like connecting things mm. was very well written but I could not understand what she was trying to say is it like live stitches that you have to just start knitting from or do you make the legs separately and then just sew it's, them on? Actually, it's all one piece. Really? Except for the arms. Yeah. The arms are awesome. Thanks. I love the arms. Thanks. Like, just like <laughs> So you make the arms separate and then just sew them on? Or? I think you're supposed to pick up from here. Oh, I but see. But I just made them completely separate and attached them because I'm like, I cannot figure out where to put them. And so if I'm knitting from here, I could be wrong. And so I'm like, I'm just going to attach them later so I can see where I want to put them. Um, I think they're great. Yeah, I'm excited. And so the feet are a little wonky. And I did I did need to knit the, the feet up as written. And so I think you just have to, like, heavily push them to where they need to be. That's great. But, yeah, so that's my little... Are you going to put wire lot. in the tail, too? Or yes. Just, okay. Yeah, oh, there's going to be wire in the tail. He's going to be holding a ball. He's going to have eyes. But, yeah, so I like your mom, mouse eyes. Thank you. They're just little beads. I do need to have you write that down because I will make okay. some of those for my cats. I probably can. I would probably just release it as like a little free, little free pattern. Or just a free pattern to your mom. Or just to you. Yeah. Okay. We didn't even introduce ourselves. Oh my God. <laughs> it's too late now. We've gone too far. Yep. It's too late. Reading the description if you have no idea who we are. But uh, so but yeah, I that's something I'm working on right now. That's that's great. I think those are awesome. I love it. I have one more thing I'm working on. Okay, go for it. You want to see? Okay. Yeah. Because it's crochet. Oh, yeah. Guys, I always, like, bitch and moan about crochet. It's like, I, I don't find it wearable for me. I don't like the style. It depends. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'll, I'll tell my story after. Unless I was going to a beach, but I'm morally opposed to water, so that's not going to happen. Right, and sunshine. And sunshine. Oh, God, no. No sunshine for me. No sun. Um... And so I would not be going to a beach or being outside where it's hot. So personally, I won't crochet clothes as of right now. We'll see if that ever changes. But for stuffies, I think knitted stuffies look weird generally. I mean, look at my rat. Um, that's the best <laughs> way. That's awesome. Man. I like both. I like I both. like crochet stuffies. I think they, I, I, I like love Emma Broom. I think they're super cute. And so I'm making Phoebe the Fox by, um, what is it? Lally Lala. And so I really, I just have oh to gosh. put oh. everything together. You're using mohair. Does I'm it, using it, Surrey, actually. Oh, Surrey, does it, is that what it calls for? Or nope. you just decided to? Oh, my gosh. I think you can, well, you can generally crochet Now, are you just making this for fun? I'm making it for Marche, for yeah. little baby oh, Adelaide. Oh, my gosh. And then the ears are in there somewhere. But, um, that is so cute. It's really fast crochet. It's really well written. She has a bunch. This is going to be a fox. So That's Phoebe really the cute. fox. And she has, like, I, I bought, like, eight patterns. <laughs> so she has a bunch of different animals? She has animals. so many. Like, if anyone who crochets sees this, they're going to be like, oh, yeah. She's we been know around her. forever. She has books Got on it. it. Like, Cool. It, they're so cute. So I uh, I think it calls for, like, a DK or a Worsted. But I didn't want to do that. You're such a rebel. I know. Um, and so I used, actually, I used fingering and, mo or, and surrey held together. So I used... 
cinnamon apricot spice and fire heart for the main color. That's pretty. And it creates this like really cool, like just rustic This is a really effect. pretty apricot color. Like a, it's not a bright apricot. It's more like yeah. a, I don't know what it is. It's beautiful. Uh, it's very <coughs> peachy. Autumnal. It's like a peachy red. I don't even. Yeah. Clayish, peachy. Yeah. Ish I say color. more like a terracotta. Yeah. Just not as orange. Mm -hmm. It's just. It's not pink. It's more though. muted. It's. I it's mean, a mystery. Color. In the regular skeins, it comes across a little bit darker, actually. Does it? Mm-hmm. But with this one, with uh, Surrey and mohair, mohair sucks it up. Surrey, it like airbrushes. It like across. mutes it. Yeah. That's how non superwash does that too. Yeah, and so I really I like. It. I wanted the, the tweed base, which is my num tweed fingering. That's a perfect thing for stuffies, though. Mm -hmm. Well, I like it in garments, too, because honestly, if you are worried it's about true. pulling, if you're true. using a solid or a tonal, it's the great tweed for that. is going to break it up as well anyways. You got me some tweed from uh, Nicole years ago, and I still mm -hmm. have it. I love it. I, still, I think I have she uses use the same tweed I do, actually. Yeah. Then I used feather in these pretty. two together. That's pretty. And then I used um, Dark Hibernation, which was one of my, two years ago, I think it was one of my uh, Christmas sock sets, and now it's just in the shop full time because it's just really good. It's pretty. Like, and that's a tweed also? Mm hmm Yeah, they're all tweed with a little bit of Surrey held together. And this is Obsidian Salt, which is an iconic one in my shop. Oh, you have, I have an Obsidian. You have an Obsidian oh, yeah. Salt. I have Obsidian Salt because it's themed uh, from one of the Akatar books. Oh, well, not Akatar, but one of the author's other series. Got it. Which many, which also Fireheart is as well. It's so pretty though. That's a perfect <sighs> so foxy happy. color. Yeah, I uh, because Marche was coming out, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna finish it in like three days because it's crochet and it's super fast. But I haven't read from a crochet pattern ever. If you want me to take actually. it to where I can? Oh yeah, because I'm going to Arizona in three, okay. week, about two and a half weeks. I might be done by then. I have if, to, if so. emergency knitting. I have to do apparently for a couple things. It's okay. Which we'll talk about later when I'm actually allowed to talk about it probably. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, I really want to finish it though. Um, Adelaide, my my newest little niece. Niece. She's I'm like, so cute. She's super cute. She's personality. Oh, she's getting. She's a serious kid. She's she's a serious. Yeah, but she'll giggle and everything. But she is getting to that age where she's just Thing like. Look at me wrong. Looking at. Well, she used to just be. I don't know. What we Facetime a lot. Okay. And now she just looks at the camera, and if she's just not in the mood, you ain't getting a smile from her. I respect that. Yeah, yeah. She's adorable. I feel like that's very up to my mm -hmm. personality. And Marche is now making stuffies. I know. Did my you know youngest. Ashley's crocheting, too? What? I know. Alaska told me that yesterday. Ashley's my oldest sister, and she's like... Anti-craft. Never. Until about a year and a half, two years she ago. She started doing Palmer Clay. Well, first she started doing the miniatures. That she oh, would make yeah. earrings, earrings out of miniatures and but stuff. But now, look, apparently, she's crocheting. Okay. Because she's like, I'm obsessed with granny squares. I'm like, my work on earth is done. Yeah, all your children now. All four of my girls, because I had two that were like, nah. I'm, and that was I mean, Alaska. Here we're no, building, that was Ashley we're building and yarn, but even Ashley, or even Alaska was like, she was I don't, don't want to knit. I don't, really mm -hmm. don't want to knit. I don't knit. I don't want to knit. I'm just For really years. easily persuaded, I guess. And then all of a sudden, what what got her into it? Oh, she started dyeing yarn. Yeah. And we're like, you probably should use some of your yarn so people can see what it well, looks like. Well, the thing like. is, Alaska's crocheted for years. She has, she has. Some blankets and stuff. Mm -hmm. But now she's her first project was a you sweater. You forced all of us to learn. You forced us all. I taught you all how to how to crochet, but yeah. not all of you did it, really. I think I taught all of you how to knit, too. I, I taught Alaska and Marcia, even though they don't remember. I taught them how to make a hat. But anyway, now all my kids are being yarn kids. Yeah. I mean, Marche making stuffies is crochet. Oh, That's yeah. fine. And Ashley wants to crochet garments. She wants to wear granny squares. It's like, well, okay. who doesn't? I mean, come on. I've seen some awesome things. Okay, I've seen, I was going to say, me, I don't want to wear. I don't think I've it's seen, your style as I've much, seen, but it, no, there's No, I've seen a some lot things that are stuff. cute, and it's like, oh, yeah, if I was a hobo hippie kind of thing, like, not hobo hippie, a boho hippie kind of <laughs> A boho. You're not a boho at all. I'm not a boho. I yeah. tried it. But I know, tried to be it. I saw, no. speaking of granny squares, uh, I've been following a lot of crocheters because I've just been in the mood to crochet. And It's forgiving. It's, it's a very awesome. Forgiving art. And it's very addicting. But there's this lady on Instagram, and I wish I knew her handle. She makes, uses thread. No. Thank you. She uses thread, <laughs> and she's making granny squares that are this big, and she's going to make a full-size blanket out of them. I don't feel like I'd have the patience for 
that person who they're thinks so that they cute. want to do that in a blanket. They're so cute. Oh, I believe you. I absolutely believe you. Can you imagine if anything happened to that blanket after you were done? Um, like, no. if a kid and touched also, it, it'd be like, I disinherit you. Also, it's made out of thread. So I wonder how it would feel. I think it would be cool if you took that and, back and then overlaid it with, like, or overlaid it on top of, like, a fabric. I think that and would then, be nice. And then, or, a, you know, a flannel or something. I don't know. I think anything. a fleece underneath it would be, like, yeah. super nice. But yeah. Oh, it's so It's almost pretty. like, and I know I'm going to get hate, but it's like crocheting doilies. What's the point? Well, people used to say that. I used to say that about socks. Knitting socks? Why? I can just buy them. They're way a cheaper. A doily. Where do you put it? You, we are just... all having tea parties. Listen. I would love to have Listen. tea parties. All day. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about it. You put them under your lamps and stuff. That's what people used to do with them. I only have floor lamps. Okay, okay doily... I, I, I'm not a part you of this not... crowd. Okay, I... doilies were for your table to protect your table. So I like only if you ever had... saw them in bathrooms, on the back of a bathroom. Or that a bathroom came after. Or a toilet. Doilies okay. originally would be like under a tea set or under, if you were going to put something on your nice wood, you don't want to put like, um, and they weren't like cup, what do you call them? Coasters? They weren't coasters because back in those days. I can see making a coaster doily. People didn't use coasters back when these were around. so rude. They didn't they had because they would use tablecloths. But doilies would go under your lamps. At least grandma, my mom, would have them under lamps, under like her glass swan thing that held the fake fruit that she made. I remember the fruit. Do you remember the fruit I remember out the of, fruit. um, sorry, this is a book. The, out of like the styrofoam balls. The styrofoam balls, but also the plastic ones that were like she, squishy. The rubber ones. I don't know if she had those, but she had made a whole set, a banana. I remember the grapes. A pear, an apple. <laughs> Um, I don't think she made grapes because they were too little, but... Well, do you remember those grapes in the 70s that were actually squishy? Yes, yeah. She didn't have those. I remember those. But the craft that she used was the styrofoam balls with the sequins and a pin. Remember that year that we I made... I do. I can't forget that year. We made apples, that I think. a lot. Ornaments. I loved the apples. They were adorable. I made, I made them when I was little, but you guys enjoyed it. it oh, fun. yeah, no. It was, like, basically a pin cushion. It was so fun. Those are fun crafts. That was a fun... You were so great at finding ways to, like bring us together for the holidays like we didn't have any like no money <laughs> well that's the thing is it's hard to have traditions when you don't have enough money to like you know four girls you're a single, single mom, mom and working full-time and stuff and so you found ways to bring us together and it was always through and do crafts, crafts. Yeah. at the table we would sit and do stamping or... mm-hmm. we'd make cards for people even though mm-hmm. we didn't send them to anyone that's how i'm with jewelry what? right now eric's like well, Eric's like, why are you making all these? I mean, they're pretty, but why are you, you don't even have them online Cause? yet? And I'm like, because I like them. They make Cause? me happy. I really just like working with clay. It's just. It's like stitch it's, markers. It's like, I have, I have probably, you know. I probably have close to a thousand stitch markers. I probably have a, a, a Tupperware bucket full of <laughs> stitch I've markers. made mine into decor, kind yeah. of, kind of. And I also have tins of different, like, I have so themed many. ones. I There's went through so all my stitch markers, and it took me, like, eight hours to that's go through all why, of them. That's put them you... on safety mm-hmm. pins. Put them in, like, oh, okay, one big stitch marker, and then, like, some for, like, sweaters. So I'd have up to, like, eight little just circle ones. I'm, I'm convinced that's why I have so many. It's so that when I'm stressed, I can sit down and organize them. Oh, my God. For I people with ADHD, it. that's, like, I love a... It. I love it. Oh. It's like I have so oh. much to do. I am so stressed because I have so much to do. What can I organize? Exactly. And I'm like, that That's closet, I, I did that last week. Yeah. I organized my towel closet. I I was like, I have so much to do. What can Eric gets so mad at me when I do something like that. And he's like, weren't you going to do this? I'm like, yeah. But this one thing was out of place. And then it took me all the way down this rabbit hole. And now the whole house is clean. But I don't know. It's almost like you can get more done. Like, I can get more done if I can clear that. Oh, it's actually out of it my definitely head. Is. It definitely of is. Organize, yeah. You have to organize what's around you before you can declutter what's in your head. Exactly, and it's so true. Eric is finally like understanding that a little bit more. Like, if the house is dirty, I will not focus. If there's dirty dishes and stuff, I will just go do them really fast. Even though he's in charge of the household stuff, I help yep. out when I can. Um, can I talk psychology for a second? Uh huh. Because I'm a therapist. Yes, you are. And I'll tell you why we do that, and I know why I do it. Why? But I do it anyway, because when you have anxiety, what is, what is anxiety? Anxiety is your brain feeling out of control. I was going to say, is it a control thing? Because absolutely. It's, and it's, and when, when I tell people that it's a control thing, they think that it means I'm a controlling person and I could try to control everybody. No. No. What it means is anxiety it's is personal control. your brain is overwhelmed and feels out of control. Mm-hmm. For what, for, it could be for one reason. It could be for several reasons. It could be for old reasons. Could be yeah. for PTSD reasons. It could oh, yeah. be for childhood things. So what happens is when you start when that anxiety rises up, 
you try to start uh, organizing things around you that you have control over. That's what OCD is, too. It's mm-hmm. like I can control certain things, and so you try to do it, control them over and over and over again. And when you do it once and that feeling's still there, a lot of people will try to do it again. Or it's not good enough. I need to. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I, that's what it is. And so when I start doing that, I'm like, I know why I'm doing this. Because I feel like, I feel overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. I need to. I, like, smile to myself as I'm, like, getting ready and gearing up to do it. Because I'm like, I can't do this right now. I can't focus. And it's like, Right. But I, what go. I would tell people, though, is as a therapist, when I was seeing people with this issue, I don't even think it's an issue up to a certain point. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell people, then then do it. What you have to do as long as it's not debilitating your life. Yeah. If you have to organize that towel closet to feel more in control. But here's here's the secret. This is what is so tricky about therapy, um, or what's so cool about it, is once you have the knowledge of why you're doing it and why you want to organize that towel closet, you will find less instances of feeling overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. Because once your brain becomes aware of the aware of the why, like knows why you do something, somehow it starts to dissipate. Yeah, it's like oh, this doesn't give me the satisfaction I need anymore. But now that I'm processing what that emotion would be that I uh, evoke during that time period, I can yep. kind of start getting it within myself regardless anyway. So it's like... It's a it's an epiphany. Very interesting. I think a big epiphany in my life was when I... It's not even just anxiety. It can be abusive relationships. Oh, it yeah. can be rescuing people. Well, it can be a, a form of um, coping. It can be it definitely can be a, a coping. coping mechanism. Yep. Um, also, it can, be, it can be an unhealthy thing too because especially with people that like get involved with the wrong person or get into friendships even with people that are never nice to them or that abuse them or, mm-hmm. you know, steal from them. Uh, if you come from a history of that over and over again, that's all your brain knows how to survive in. Yeah. And so instead of I was trying say that's to... It's a form of dissociation as well sometimes too. It could be. In, that, in those kind of situations. Uh-huh. But it's like your brain is like, I don't know how to survive in healthy relationships. So I need to find unhealthy ones because then I know what to do. And so those are epiphanies for me, just from my life Mm -hmm. and uh, coming from an alcoholic father, Mm -hmm. getting involved with the wrong kind of people in my life, even if it was friends, even if it was associating with wrong people. Yeah. So anyway, that's the psychology corner for a second. I love that. I I am always like super interested and curious and honestly fascinated by what makes us do what we do. Well, and I think we both suffer from anxiety. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I even it it's a it's very depending on me. Me, sure. I can always tell. Except for okay, I had a breakdown this last week, and it was so funny. Funny um, breakdown? It was hilarious. I was laughing through it because Eric was laughing at me, and I was laughing. And it's not it was not funny in the moment, but I knew that afterwards it would be, and I didn't want to get him upset with it because I was on my period. Okay, that's all you need. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't get emotional. I don't have I like a little bit. Mine's only over the course of like a couple of days, like two, three that's days good. maybe. That's nice. I don't get emotional. That's good at all. I I always am like I look so good right now. Why do I look so good this week? I don't know what happened, but my anxiety was at like a thirty, and mm. I could not find my hairbrush, and Eric was not like he kept like following me room to room. Didn't know I was looking for it. But because I couldn't find my hairbrush, my head was itching. And oh. I was starting just to get so overwhelmed. And so I just sat down. And I'm like, babe, I don't want to cry. But I'm crying right now because I can't find my effing hairbrush. Did you take it? And I just started, like, bawling and laughing. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm not like this. I don't want to be like this. I don't know what's wrong with me. But my anxiety was just so hard and heavy. And I'm like, I just want to tell you to go go away so I can like sit here and so I I was like curled up on the floor and he just like kind of came and sat behind me and started laughing and just holding me and stuff and I just wanted to punch him right there but at the same time I'm just like no I'm fine this is hilarious and then afterwards we were able to like laugh about it and stuff but yeah anxiety can be so debilitating and I did not realize just how much I you know how many women are probably out there right now going holy crap I get it like I'm I've done that I've never had it happen to me before. It like, might have been anxiety, and but it could have been a lot of hormonal things, too. Probably. Yeah, I think, I honestly, I think so. They, that sounds like pregnancy, too. I'm just going to say that I know you're not pregnant, but I know when you're pregnant, that, I, you know, I missed it. Things. Honestly, I missed a day of my placebo, and so it threw everything off for me, I think. That could be, that could be so enough to mess That was the first day up. back. Yeah. Because it has messed up the past before, but I'm just like, but not ever to that extent. 
And so, yeah, I don't necessarily suffer from anxiety, but that day would have really proven so. differently. Have, I think but my do. anxiety, I usually have it worked for me. Yes, it can be a, it can be it's definitely like, okay, a motivator I'm stressed. too. I'm doing this, 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 and this, and that's it. And then I go and do it, and I feel good. But um, yeah, it's a good motivator for me that I've never, never had that before. <laughs> that was funny. That was so crazy for me. Um, but yeah, so a breakdown on a, over your brush. And we found it that night. We actually went out and bought my a hair Where brush. Where was it? It was on my side of the bed in a basket that had all my face cream and stuff. Because I usually do that in the bathroom. But the night before, I'm just like, oh, no, no, I'll just do it really fast and just leave it by my nightstand. And so I put it on the ground. And so when I went to do my routine that night, I reached down. And I just started crying again. I'm like, I found my brush. You're like, you little fucker. Where were you? Oh, my you? God. I was so pissed. I was so pissed. And Eric's just there scrolling on his phone waiting for me to get done. And stuff. I'm like, I found my brush. He's like, are you kidding me? We went through, like, Man. the ringer all day, and we just kept laughing. But we went to, like, Spirit of Halloween, and oh, he, he did things to make me very, very happy. We spent way too much money on pumpkins. Like fake pumpkins? <sighs> yeah. And we got, um, Eric is going to be a gremlin with I Freya. He's going to be a grandma. <laughs> he's going to be a gremlin with Freya. So we got her oh, a little gremlin cute. costume, and then he's, like, the changed gremlin, but it's still just... He, he just always gets those onesies. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. For Halloween, and I do that on occasion. And then this year, me and Odin are going to go as Chucky. Oh, cute. <laughs> so I got a matching sweater, and I'm just going to do my hair all crazy and stuff. But he has a little sweater one where it looks like he's walking around. Um, so it has, like, the feet in the oh, front. Oh, those are fun. And little watch. arms and, like, a little ruler that he's going to be holding. <laughs> My favorite little costume for dogs and cats is the spider one. I have that, too. Oh, my gosh. I That one is so much fun. I love spiders. I'm going to probably put They're it on so Jalander cute. because she was paralyzed. That's right. And she's, is and she now still she's, doing well? She learned how to walk in a different way. She's our dachshund. She's uh, 16 she was, years old now. Like, crumpled for, like, two years, wasn't it? No, it was, like, uh, six, seven months. Oh, it was But we so took her short. to the vet, and they're like, oh, there's nothing we can do. Even if you did physical therapy, it wouldn't do anything. Was it just inflammation or something? No. No, it was her spine. It was fused. But then and it still is. I'm pretty sure she is. Te she's such a stubborn little. She just. I love her. It out. She, she's she's just like no. I'm gonna walk. And so she hops. Her back leg. She hops. Hey, whatever works, man. So she's doing stairs and stuff, and we're trying to limit it so she has mobility longer because we're pretty sure it started going downhill when we moved into this house because she never is allowed on the couches or anything like that because we know with dachshunds it can really damage their spine, and we didn't have money for like ramps and stuff and now those are all over our house but um That's so cute. when we moved into this house it's the first time that we had stairs oh yeah and so we think like after about a year or so okay, um going up and down yeah, that's what happened to her. But, yeah, now she's just stubborn. And so I think, like, a little hopping spider is going to be super fun this year because we're going to put her in that costume. But, yeah, she still cute. she still is incontinent. So she she did does have IVDD, I think is what it's called. Okay. <sighs> Don't ask me what that means. Um, but it is, like, paralyzation from the spine. And it's just, it just affects mainly the, the back legs. Mm. And it starts at the center of the – between the uh, shoulder blades. But it and sounds dogs. like she's starting to get some, some – uh, ability back in those nerves or something I she's really able to don't move know we bit. asked the vet and she's like what that's because like, <laughs> they're like nothing to change it it's a miracle we got her a wheelchair she hated it and so we got her a drag bag she hated it so we've just been like what do we do really monitoring her and she has a diaper and stuff and she's like hold my beer <laughs> i'm just gonna do this <laughs> just one day eric's like i can't find jolander i'm like didn't you bring her she's up here with me I'm like and wait she what just was running around <laughs> Uh, yeah, she was, well, she was sliding at that point, because it was over oh. the course of, like, two months that she started, she like, start now she just hops up the stairs like nobody's business before, it was like, but now she's, she's just, like, like standing with her crutches, she's like, and I'm gonna take one off and throw it! Well, it's kind of funny, because she was propelling herself around with one leg, just kind of scooting from the very beginning, and so it was like, she was, it's like she was on a boat with one paddle. <laughs> For the longest time, she just kept going in a circle. She was always going left. She, she was practicing. Turn right. And it just slowly, like... Wait, her name's Jillander? Jillander. And in the movie Zoolander, he could only make left turns or something. <laughs> was that left turns? That's what we're thinking. No. Or right, or right turns. Right turns, right he couldn't turn left. So she's like blue stealing it up all the way that's right that's right <laughs> but yeah so i think a hopping spider is going to be super fun for her and then Hermie just doesn't want to participate because she's a butthole um so yeah we that's have the four dogs but but speaking so, yeah. of crochet oh yeah before we oh, get too yeah, far i want to show my 
Um, I made a I made a really cool crochet wrap that yeah, you I did. made it a few months ago, but I wanted to show it because uh, it cold like, weather's coming. It is so perfect. It's for crochet autumn too. And I'll tell you the story. I was watching a podcast. So I was watching. Um, Kristen of Volenbein, oh, yeah. our friend Kristen, she's so sweet. I hope we see her again this year. Yeah, we saw her she last year. She tends to year. like hide from the festivals she, a little bit. Yeah, but that's okay. I mean, she came last year. Yeah, we that's got to true. see her. She was crocheting, and I hadn't crocheted in a long time. I mean, I and it's it's kind of like riding a bike. Once you have done it for years, and then you put it down for years, oh yeah, and I pick can, it back up, yeah. and and it was a lot of fun. So, but I'd never made a pattern. That's the same with I me never, with the, the Fifi or whatever it's called. Fifi that's the not fox. true. Actually, I did make some little mini um, Converse for a baby. That's true. That was a long time ago. But I oh, never. Yeah. This is I all. I didn't know that, that crochet patterns were a thing growing up. I thought it was just I doilies didn't and that was it. I thought it was pretty much blankets and yeah. scarves and stuff. So I didn't know there was actual patterns. Yeah. So I, I bought this by Not Bad Brit. Um, and I'm, I think her name is Brittany something on Ravelry. And my, but I think it might be under both. Not Bad Brit. K N O T bad Brit um, and it's called the intentions wrap and it's a crocheted wrap and it's so pretty so you it's really picked long the best colors for it too I used my colors um, in my shop I tried to make something with if I have a, like a collection it's it's fun to make something out of the collection just so you can show what it looks like so well, it does give it people a really good indication of does. like using advents as well it's right like, what can you use this is this? the perfect for an advent even though she she used a main color and then minis for mm -hmm. each of the different colors in between. But you could do, you could totally do. Well, how many stripes other... is it of the different colors? I don't remember. And I think I. Because um, you could at least do a 12. It's supposed to be a little bit longer than advent. this. I, I messed up on the middle. You were supposed to make the middle different, bigger, I think, somehow. I don't remember how. But, um, yeah, it's these stitches that I had never done before. And I had only ever made chain like you chain mm -hmm. and then you start crocheting. No, this is a chain. No, you've list, done double. But oh, always starting with a chain. I don't know what you call it with crochet. Energy. It's not cast on, is it? I don't know what you call it. Chain on? I think it's just chain. You just chain. Guys, please correct us. <laughs> so we, I don't, yeah. We don't know patterns. And that's why. In the comments, always, if like, it's called something else, it's cast on with knitting. What is it called to crochet? I don't know. Yeah. But it's a, it's a start where, I think it was this side, you actually. I'm sure you guys are all, if you crochet, you're all out there <laughs> going, like, oh, yeah, on, it's this called is this. basic. It's, um, you, like, you chain like two, and then you immediately start crocheting into your chain, but when you come out and you finish that stitch, it's like you're completing a whole, each stitch is a full stitch, like a double crochet, but you, it's like you keep it going, so when you're done with that very first row, it's a whole row of, like, double crochets. Okay. So there's no chain. It's. You're just okay. creating it. Uh, it's really cool. It took me I'm a minute. You have to buy the pattern and look at it because yeah, it does sound interesting as much as I'm just like oh, I don't really crochet. It's like that oh, would be a just, great cast on for a blanket too. It would because chaining my chains always ended up being tighter, tighter yeah. than the rest of the blanket. Well, what I usually do is I <clears throat> I chain t like two or three, and then I do and turn it and do a row, and then. I just turn it and do a row and do a oh, row like that. Oh, you just go that way. Mm -hmm. And then when I get to the width that I want, I'll turn it and then I'll go the lengthwise across just one of them because it's still, you can't really tell. And this but you one kind of tell. It's kind of like that, but it's not, you're not turning back. You're actually creating like the first row of stitches. Yeah, and that's it's like, I mean, you well, can, that's technically like that's what I was doing too, but it wasn't, it saying. doesn't look good. <laughs> Well, you, but you were going that. back and forth. Well, I'm going back and forth to create the one first stitch right, for right. each of and those rows and then turning it horizontally. Mm -hmm. And then that was my first row right there. And then I go back and forth on it. But it's yeah, not as she, pretty as well, but that yeah, is. Because she, what she does is like you're doing a chain row. Mm -hmm. But they're, they're actually taller. Yeah. It's just stitches. Like it's stitch way one, different. stitch it just two. Looks so much better. It looks very, it's very finished. I mean, I it's really just, like they it. look like regular stitches. Yeah, mine does not look nice. I mean, well, yours is going. Your do, yours is going this way, basically. You're yeah, and then rows. I switch it or turn yeah. it, and yeah. I've never done that. I know I'm probably. You're all sitting there going, oh, it's "That's like a pretty basic normal. beginner." Yeah, and so, but the yeah, the pattern part. Beautiful. I made a lot of mistakes. Had to go back a lot just because you get going so fast. And anyway, so I used um, my. This is mousse. It's just. It's a really deep. Chocolatey brown. So color. hard to find a good brown. I'm not gonna lie. I, like, I have a I hard have time several finding a brown in my shop. You do. You're really you. 
I like tonals. You've spent a really, you've mm -hmm. invested a lot of time into making good neutral tonals to go with things. I do. As well as like all the special Because I stuff. was lacking that for years yeah. in the very beginning. I think I'm lacking some of that in the neutrals. I, yeah, I just, I never made. I have plenty of purple. And you would think I would get the hint because people would always be like, well, do you have any tonals that go with that? I know, color? do you know what I get like, the I most of? Do you what? have any grays? Really? Do you have any I have grays? so many grays. I have like you five have different grays. You have a good collection grays. of grays. I have. It's well, and when you when One's you're technically black, but it's not black enough for black. Well, and dyeing and dyeing the yarn and stuff, you're always wondering, do I have too many of this color? What colors am I missing? But you know, I'm there's lots of shades. I'm putting all of my stuff in my shop in a rainbow form, so I can see where I'm missing. That's a good idea too. Um, and take the tonals and put them in a second rainbow, so I can see where I'm missing there too. I have mine in my shop. Try I tried to do it kind of in in rainbow order, but it's hard when you have different. I shades. need it physically. I can't look online oh, mean, and be like, like mean, physically. Like lay them out? Lay them out. I like did in that my studio, for like show in the boxes. Once. Like have it. And you know what oh. I'm missing? Hmm. I don't have a lot of blues. I have like bright <laughs> blues, couple. but I don't have like true blue. You know what's kind of funny? Hmm. I don't have any bright blues. And I was thinking about that the other day. And I'm like, I need oh. to make a bright blue because I have Twilight Path, which is not here. Um, Your Twilight Path is probably like similar to one of my, like that dark blue up there. It's like almost like a, it's like a blued steel, but mm, with a little bit of like bright a in it. Like navy, kind of. Yeah, it's like a better navy than the navy, because the navy always burns. Navy is hard to die with. Navy can, well, I don't know if it's called burning, but it turns kind of orange if, it, if it's too yeah, hot. Yeah, I think it's technically called burning, but it's not burned. It's not burned. It's you just can over, it, overcooked, but. maybe. But anyway, um, this is the, I do have... This is the mini set, the Cozy Autumn mini collection. And with all my purchases, I you do get a free bag, a free canvas bag. Because you're special. I just like to... I'm, it's like a you know, touch, just like your yarn labels. It's just an oh, extra touch. My yarn labels are... I'm, so, I'm going to say it, they're the best. because They are. I ha this took me years. To I'm going to be redoing mine soon. The concept of, these are coffee label, like coffee cozies, coffee You sleeves. were wanting them for years before you actually For years. Did it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, I put, I actually, these hands, put snaps on every single label and on the mini labels. What about their snapshot? Oh my God, no. See that? Immediately no. Um, but they do take time. Yeah. Someday when I can find someone to do them for a decent price. I'll have someone make them. But then I stamp my logo and then I stamp the yarn type on it. Anyway, that comes in a set and they're in the shop. Um, but that's a crochet project. I crocheted something. I can't believe we, we both, both had a crochet project here. I love crochet. That's so great. And I it, want to show you though because I'm changing of, my, lab my label. Real quick, I want to say one more thing about crochet. You were talking about garments. Yeah. People are coming out with some really cool garments that are not, they don't look like crochet. I think two of wands is one that I really she do does like. Her job. Um, there's one, it might be Explorer Knits. Okay. There's I some know good she, crochet I know she dyes yarn, but there's one within that aesthetic, and it might be Explorer Knits, it might be someone else. I'll have to look it up, but okay. yeah, okay. there are some people coming up with some beautiful, like, cardigans and stuff that's just sweaters and stuff. So anyway. I always love the Velvet Acorn oh, yeah. as well. She's been around She's so been around since I, before I was even Oh, yeah, her. she was around since before Instagram, because she uh -huh. was... Yep. Pinterest find for me. She was on nitty.com, or wasn't she on the Nitty blog? I think so. I think one of those. Anyway, go so ahead yeah, and tell her, me about your labels. Both Sorry. her and Isabel Kramer, I actually initially saw on Pinterest when I started. I did um, too. That's knitting. right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And uh, I saw hers, though, way before because I was still crocheting. Oh, that's right. I was that's crocheting right. before I was dyeing yarn, before I was knitting mm -hmm. and stuff. But you were an awesome crocheter. I still am. But did I mean, you, you were. Did you see my fox? I like. Oh, I know. You I, were making I your own. still am that same way. I don't use the same, like, stitches as other people and stuff but if I see something I know I can I can crochet it I'm that's how I'm I am with these right little there. guys I don't know if I can make a full-size one and but well, you can make a mini I could do anything when it's a mini for some reason okay anyway really tell me about your it. labels okay. I want to hear about them so I w I took Eric to a tattoo convention a few weeks ago um because he he's always had like these grand plans for different tattoos and so finally I'm just like okay you know for your birthday I'm gonna get you a tattoo or for our anniversary I think actually and so I got him. He got the dark mark. That is he a Slytherin? He says he's a Gryffindor, and I do I not believe he's him. He's a Slytherin. He's a Slytherin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, he's not a Gryffindor. I'm a Gryffindor. Um, but, and he's like, he, and it's funny because he doesn't necessarily, like, he loves the stories and stuff, but it's more the, the look of it, the aesthetic of it. It's not because he's like, oh, yeah, go Death Eaters or anything. He just literally loves how the dark mark looks. 
Mm-hmm. And so he's been wanting it for years. I'm like, I like it, too. Okay. And so he, we found an artist, and he's like, can you just make up your own, like, version of this? And, like, we'll just go with your style and stuff. It's kind of what I want. And so I'll have to send you a photo so you can maybe stick it in here. Maybe. Okay. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, so we got him that. And while I was there, um, this little girl was selling for well for donations she was putting tattoos on people she had her own like little stand and it had like a glitter sign and so she's like i'm trying to buy these spongebob boots and so she was going around with these little temporary tattoos she's like do you want to buy one and so i got one on me which was just like little tiny dragon wings just on my wrist and i'm like i actually kind of want that i kind of really wanted just a dragon on my wrist and so we were looking around i found a great tattoo artist who's local and i'm gonna work with her on a couple different things um, but I got a dragon tattoo. It's cute. I love it so much. And I was talking to her. I'm like, can I buy this design? And she's like, no, no, you can just have it. Does put she it, design put it? Put it on whatever you want. Um, well, I sent her an idea of what I wanted, and then she designed it for me. Oh, wow. And uh, so the dragon kind of um, is similar to a lot of clay cutters. It's really cool, seen. though. Um, and so I'm like, can you, like, play with this and make it? like that so it's very like basic has some shading in it and so she said I could just use it and so here's my new logo how old was she you said little girl. she's oh no the little girl was not a tattoo artist I'm like she was a little 12 year old girl trying to walk around uh selling those because her parents are tattoo artists oh god and so I found another tattoo artist there who's close to my age um her and her husband are both tattoo artists so this was at the tattoo convention yeah yeah, I guess they do it every year, um, but I'm going to go to her for a few other things, but I'm just, I love this, and I've been wanting a dragon tattoo, and I'm not going to be getting the one that's, like, up my spine, across my You're not going to do that with I'm wings like, and everything? I think I'm going to do that one, so this is perfect, and yeah, so I I have magnets, I have car magnets, little magnets, and I'm going to be bringing them, actually, to Woolen Folk, but if you cool. guys are interested, let me know, because I can also put them online, because I know some people are like, oh, I want to collect and put them on water bottles and stuff, but... Yeah, I'm pretty excited, so hopefully I can get things change over in time to put these on my new labels for Woolen Folk. You can. I'll have to go this next week, honestly, to get those done, because I might do. We can put them in the right format if you need to on an app that I have. I love those apps. Yeah. That's yeah, so that's, that's exciting. Cool. <laughs> Derail that way. No, I like oh my it. my gosh. Okay. I keep going on all these tangents. I'm so sorry. Do you have other things that you've finished? I do have a okay. couple things I finished, Let's actually. Let's talk about what you've done, what okay. you've made. Um, well, last week, I already put that one down there. Or uh, Last week or two weeks ago, I came out with my Dryad tank. It's so cute. It's super cute on. This is in uh, Creepy Girl Tendencies. That is just so not the colors I would ever think you would knit. I know. I actually in. wanted to do a photo shoot that was like Barbie-ish. Gosh, Tristan. But it would have like bat glasses on. It would be really cute with a with a fluffy skirt too. I was thinking along those lines, honestly. Something really girly, which is so not your so normal. Not, well, I was gonna make it girl, like work girly stuff, but then have everything else gothic. That would type. be cool. Yeah, I like but it. But the thing I'm the most proud of is one, the shaping options, because okay. I put in the pattern like me, girl who can't do math, how to calculate to Good extend luck. the size. No, it actually works out perfectly. I had Good. a bunch of my testers because. Uh, try it out because um, this is a cropped tank. Right, and for some of us that have larger breasts mm-hmm. but smaller waists. For that, and then also a lot of people are like, can I make it longer? I'm like, oh, yeah? you don't want to make it longer because this is a two by one rib stitch. And so if you make it longer, all it's going to do is scrunch yeah. up on you. Yeah. And so I wanted to make it so you know how many stitches to actually cast on because what you're going to do mm-hmm. is you're going to cast on the um, recommended width of wherever is your largest portion. And then you're going to be decreasing until you get to your bust size Mm -hmm. for that cast on count. And so it's a little tricky because... No, that makes sense though. Yeah, well, because also you have more stitches in the front than the back, which is something that you told me about with my my summer court tank that you knit. Uh Uh-huh. Because you're like, I have more fabric in the back. I had to decrease a lot. Well, because if you have someone that has larger breasts, but then their smaller rib cage, and you try to make you measure around and you just make the center in between, you know, in the middle of the stitches. It's like, we're not really proportioned that way. My, yeah, my, my side seams are going to be on the side of my boob. Yeah. Because it's, it's too small. Yeah, so I took that to heart and I Go heard ahead. back from one of my larger test from back with my um, half moon tea pattern, one of my mm-hmm. first patterns. 
I remember I want to go back and revise that pattern a little bit and put in some shaping options because it's a little bit harder with um, color work yoke. But with this, I really wanted to be able to have people customize it for their own body type, not just their bust size. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of have an entire page of how to do that, an example of how I did that, and all That's that jazz smart. within. Um, so yeah, I'm really proud about that, but I'm really proud of this bow. The bow is so cute. It's so cute. I tried so hard to Your make it tutorial. Your pictures are so cute with it too, <laughs> Thank you. that you did, with the first version, which was a darker, yeah, it's more like, neutrally color. Yeah, it's it? a, a peach pinky color. Yeah, yeah, it's. And my tech editor still has it. <laughs> oh. I probably need a writer. Um, but it usually doesn't have the stripe. The first version I, like the stripe, I did was though. this. I like that one too. Oh, it's because you like the green. I love the green. And it has just, it has directions for both kind of ties. So you can just do what I ca originally called an I cord, but this is not an I cord. It's actually seven stitches around. Oh, I like that too for straps. It's flat. It's because it's flat, mm -hmm. but wider. I like it for I, wide I really straps. like that. And you can yeah. see even at the top right here, it's going to be flat against your neck. Because one thing I don't like with tank tops is where you can actually like see the line in your skin because it's just holding so much on there. Mm -hmm. And with a couple of my other tank top patterns I've done, I've had a larger stitch count to cast on with, but it's like slip one with yarn in front pearl, slip one with yarn in front pearl, or something like that. I can never remember. Um, or slip one with yarn in front knit one, I think. But it has to be an odd number of stitches, so if you want to make it thicker, you can. I just, I'm, I appreciate that you're, I, I just think it's, um, for people, especially if they have larger breasts, to have, it's a, just a, drag that to have straps that are flat, I've seen a lot of people just knit back and forth or crochet back and forth mm -hmm. to make a strap. It just doesn't, it, doesn't it stretches It too stretches much. too much. Yeah. So this has a little bit more integrity because you have those slip stitches in there. Mm -hmm. So it holds that yarn up in place a lot better. Exactly. Um, but I really, after I knit my first one with just these ties, I'm just like, those look like limp and noodles. I mean, it's really pretty, but I mean, I think that the wider, thicker strap looks better. Well, I'm or, just saying or, like the, the bow in general. And this part is, just look at that. This. Okay, the tie took as about as long as the actual pattern did, <laughs> as the actual Why? garment did, because it's, this is on size one that I knitted on. Okay. And this part right here, all my testers are like, Tristan, why? Let me see, I'm gonna get it. But it's a very, you create a very dense fabric because yeah. you want it to hold its shape. Right. And so this one is, I think this is also, this part too? This is a, like a leaf? Or it's, yeah, well, that, that like one's just, leaf. this one, the leaf part is knit flat. So I wanted to create like a little cute little leaf thing at the bottom. But so when you tie so it, cute. I try to do a tutorial. I know you're not good at doing tutorials, but you do like a tie and then you have to like bunny ear it mm -hmm. and then tie it like that. So that can be yeah. a little difficult. That's good. But if you like fiddle, cause yeah, it sucks that you do have to fiddle with it. But if you fiddle enough, you can make a passable bow. What if you did it without that first knot and just did the bunny ears and tied those around? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. No, you need something to hold it in place, but it will, it can come Look out really Look how pretty that looks though. It it's, can come out really pretty. It pops, that color pops. It's so yeah, cute. Yeah, so I'm pretty, But, but pretty this is so pretty girly, but the other version mm -hmm. is feminine, this but also wear. the colors thinking, are gorgeous. Just with the shaping that I put in, I think this would also make a really cute like dress. It would. Right? Like a little mini dress? It would, if you just kept knitting it. Is it Yeah, you just up? have to increase. Yeah, and that's that's what's great about it. Yeah. So this has like, I think it's like 13 inches of negative ease. That's crazy. And so it just stretches across. And so it's to fit all the different curves and stuff. And yeah, it just, it were, ended up working out really well. So I finished a bunch of these. Okay, I can't see. <laughs> I'm blind, um, I can't I have see. But I like two more on the needles and one that's with my tech editor. Your first tank was really pretty too. Yeah, I, I do like it. And I love the color, it's wearable. I ended up doing one with like almost all of my, <laughs> with a bunch of my Lord of the Rings colors, the rest of them. But so th I finished those, I'm really excited about them. It is on Ravelry. I do have kits still available in the shop. It's like once you get into my shop, they're right there for the pre-orders. I'll be having those open probably one more week or so. But yeah, it's just a quick knit, honestly. It's really it's cute and it's great, it's great for if you have leftover yarn. <laughs> Yeah, um, for all the sizes, I think you don't need more than one mini for the, the tie. Contrast. Okay. I think. That's good to know. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's the same for all of them. So yeah, you don't need it. But I think you only need up to three skeins, regardless of size. That's really good. Yeah. It's so a if, you, if you have knit. any sock sets, 
and you want to make one for a kid or if you're That's like super perfect. small, it's a great option for a sock set. So one, w- how many skeins, full skeins for I the think body? For the first two or three sizes, you only need one skein. Oh and then it's for sizes four to eight or nine. You need two skeins, and then those last ones, you only need three. So it would be cute for baby sizes, too. Just saying. I know you don't have those, I'm not doing but it. I think don't that would. Don't make me would, do it. Oh, my gosh. That, could you imagine Adelaide? Well, I have little? a bunch of, like, 13-year-olds, like, being knit four with oh, a small size, yeah. too. And I'm like, that's good. That's going to be super cute. Well, I want to show um, <clears throat> a wrap that uh, is by Amba O'Brien. She's so good. Oh, she's so good. She makes mostly just wraps. I know she has other things too, but she's killing it with the wraps over the last few years that I've seen. Yeah. And I know she's been around (coughs) a lot longer than I have, but she designed this wrap with my yarn. I was so honored. Oh my gosh, I would be. I was so, so honored. I I remember you messaging me that day and you're like, I'm like, guess what? That is so, (laughs) so nice. She ordered from me and then she used them in a pattern and that, and she has a newsletter that she, um, cause she uses advent calendars every year too. Yeah. She's to make really great to wraps design and, de- um, events. and shawls and that with, uh, I, th- I think she has a sweater too, a couple of sweaters with advent calendars with minis, but this is the fizzalicious wrap. And, um, she used my, for her main color, these are this little star like thingy. I don't, she calls Stitch. it something. It's called like the star fruit or something. That looks very tedious. No. Really? Mm-mm. It takes a little bit. Of, I mean, it's not a quick stitch. It's like a bobble. Okay. Yeah. It's it's not a hard stitch. I mean, it's just time a little more time consuming. It's and such, it's like, it's so beautiful. great with that contrast of the garter instead of, like, stockinette having that garter in between It's each. garter, so this part that. you whiz through. Yeah. And you use a different color mini. So she used, um, she bought a couple of my Earthy Collection sets, and then she put, because I have an earthy collection set with the sagebrush colors, and then I have one with the manicure colors, which is more these ones. And then she picked some out of each set and put them together to create a big set of uh, 12, I think. Oh, it's just so great because you're those sets that you made, you wanted to create with fades in mind uh-huh. and I, within yep. one color selection. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you did such a good job with having Thank that you. transition like so small. I have a really hard time <laughs> dying in between colors. So when I'm doing my fade into phase that I do... Fades Sometimes. are not easy to do. They are not easy. No. I usually like dye ones that would fade together, and I'm like, okay, now I need to dye the in between colors That's right. or the That's... ones that I missed because yep. uh, when I never go, close enough. I know when I go to my yarn uh, inventory to find a fade. That's how I realize, oh crap, I've got three of four colors that could be a fade, and I, you know, I you need to that make. One. Yep. But this is uh, so. This I have kits for the Fizzalicious. It comes with the main color, which is manicure, um, and then it comes with twelve minis. In a bag, which is uh, just a bag with the Fizzalicious on it that says Fizzalicious wrap. But the pattern is Amba O'Brien, and it is on Ravelry. And the funny story is uh, Kristen from Vine ordered one of my Fizzalicious kits way back when. Mm. And then I'm watching her podcast, and she was knitting the Intentions wrap out of these colors. Oh, that's a good idea. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I had already knit this one, I believe, mm-hmm. out of these colors to show at a show. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, that's why I picked. I would have probably made that this in yeah. these colors because it looked really good with that. So I picked a different set. But um, this has been so popular. And she does have a DK weight version. Mm-hmm. I just don't have the kits for the DK weight. I don't have the sets either. I just haven't dyed up any of the DK in a while of yeah. those colors. I probably will eventually, but... Anyway, so go check out Amber O'Brien and get on her newsletter because so her newsletter you'll get. She'll give you updates on Advent wraps. And yeah, she's so great at designing and, oh my for gosh. Advents because so many times we always get asked like, "Oh, I, I want to buy an Advent, but I don't know what to knit with it." And right. so she has a lot of great options. And she does um, knit alongs with all her mm-hmm. new patterns. So go check every out year Amber. she comes out with a new mystery Advent. She along, does, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. New Advent along, and she'll <laughs> usually find a dyer that's making an Advent. Mm-hmm. And she'll use their yarn and then, but it's great. She has so many patterns if you need to know what to do with Advent. I'll have to bring one of my Advent, uh, I know Wool and Pine designed um, the Viserian shawl with one of my Fade into Face. I'll have oh, to bring really? that next time just, just to give people options. Well, you have your sweater too that you made well, out of yeah. Advent. Yeah, I have my um, my favorite just, adventure sweater too. That you designed, which that's awesome. Minis. Yeah. I love it. I'm never designing for Advent again because that was fun. That's hard with sweaters. I mean, a shawl is one thing, but when it's you're doing a sweater... It's hard because sizing-wise, and so I yeah. had to really make sure that all the sizes could include just one advent. Right. Without having to, like, for the larger sizes, having to buy two advents, um, which is a pain right. in the butt. It so, is. yeah, I get that. But, yeah, yeah. just... Get, that might be a good idea, especially, like, 
up until Advent comes along, having uh, different ideas of what to use your Advent for. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring the Viserian shawl. I'm working on it. Um, and, and tell us in the comments, is it silly that I assume that people would know what to do with minis? It's really awful that I have yeah. assumed that about people. Yeah. And so... I have the same assumption, though. It's like, put it in something. Yeah, so give us some what comments in below, like, like what... Um, what things you use your minis for? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious because I know that some people use the minis for like little um, things to put on the trees. The ornaments or mm -hmm. the, the first thing that ornaments. always comes to my mind is always like a shawl because it's yeah. everybody can you do it. You don't have I to worry see, about something. And then I'm over here like I don't really like knitting shawls because right. they take too long. And so I've used them on that's socks. That's why I did the, the My Favorite Adventure sweater because I'm like now you can use all your minis from a full advent to put into one project that you can wear that's not a shawl. And color work, you can do it oh, if you're yeah. doing color work sweaters or color work socks. Oh yeah, I throw those minis into so many different things. Right, there's I'll a lot I'll probably of end up knitting that Fizzleish shawl though at some point because I, I really it's do a like fun, it. It's a wrap, it's not a shawl, so it is mm -hmm. long and what do you call that off? Not, it's it's like a parallelogram, what's it got called? Uh, it's not, is it asymmetrical? offset? Asymmetrical. Okay. Yeah, it's like an asymmetrical. Is that I what it's can... called? Asymm it's a wrap, not an asymmetrical shawl, though. It's a, it's a wrap. I don't, know. I don't think it's asymmetrical, then. It's I, I don't know what it is. It's like it's a, a rhombus. Rhombus, yeah. Okay. Like mammal. It's a rhombus. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I hurt my finger the other day. and air I'm like, will you give me a Band-Aid? This is during my, my brush meltdown. And oh. Harry's like, what do you want me to do? I'm like, I just need a Band-Aid. And he's like, what bleeding. finger is it? I'm like, it's this one. Okay, look at, can you see my hands and my arms? Oh, kitty scratching. No. I'm the fix-it person in my house. Oh. I took apart my dryer again and again? replaced all the parts inside because it wasn't working. But I don't want well, to buy you have to be the fix-it person. Vaughn could do it, but it would take a very long time. It, he, he's very, he's very particular. I'm just like, give me he's a YouTube like, video. I'll YouTube fix it. video. I don't have that glue. Maybe the safety glue will work instead. I'm replacing all my toilet fixtures and stuff this there week, too. I bought all the stuff for it. I'm like, I got to replace these. They're starting to leak and they're getting old. And why... Why buy a new appliance or something if you can fix it? I'm kind of cheap that way. Yeah, is that bad? Okay. I sometimes will get overwhelmed and be like, I'm just, I'm just, just gonna. I know one. a lot of people do, but like my fridge broke and I oh, no, all I needed I was a new fridge. panel and it was like thirty bucks. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm gonna do that. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Let's. That. that was oh, a I have appliance one more thing corner. That I finished. Yeah, show <laughs> me what you made. So Eric. Um, won't let me knit him very many things. He'll let me knit him hats, and that's been about it. Yep, that's how Vaughn is, too. <laughs> but I asked him, um, our friend Tannis Gray came out with a pattern earlier this year, and it was Star Wars themed. And I'm like, well, more specifically, it was Mandalorian-themed. And that's something that me and Eric would weekly watch. Oh, it's that's cool. It's one of our shows. We always, on Thursdays, we watch and catch up with a couple of things like America's Got Talent and then Mandalorian. And um, so she came out with this beautiful cowl. And I think it's only a two-color cowl, but... I'm special, and I put five into it. And um, Eric was like, yeah, I'll wear that. I'll totally wear that. So It's he, a cowl, and he'll wear it? Mm-hmm. So it's called This is the Way. That is awesome. I love it so much. And so it's with the Paul Worth. I let him, like, feel the yarn. I'm like, are you going to be okay with this? Is it too soft? He's like, okay, I can I can handle this. This is this pretty good. This is pretty good. I'm like, okay, great. Because it's uh, written for DK yarn. And so I used Tombstone Midnight, for this black color in here. Terrason, which is my shop's favorite green. That's the mini I had with the... Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but my shop's favorite green, Toffee, which is, strangely enough, I've had it for years, but, like, randomly, it's been super popular. Yep. It's a good... Recently. A good yeah. Muted tannish gold. Yeah. And then um, we have Cinder. And so those are the five colors that are in it, and I absolutely loved working with it. She is... Okay. She is so good at creating pictures she in can. color work i am i know i talked about this last week but i am not and i'm just always so impressed by people who can make the color work that they like write down actually translate well with yarn you're one that can do that very well too with mm -hmm. your little ornaments that you did for the star Wars those were over stitching but but it's the you same could concept. do it with color work yeah. yeah oh yeah i'm actually i actually enjoy doing that a lot yeah and yeah. i feel like I really feel like cowls are the way to go. And if I was smart about it and not, didn't just design sweaters all the time, I would just design a bunch of cowls because they're easy, they're one size, and they're in the round so I don't have to purl. Great gift ideas, quick knits. Oh, I'm knitting so many of them. Using I actually, up yarn. Oh, yeah. Yarn but because we're, like, running out of time a little bit, I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll talk about my other one that I'm designing um, okay. for Woolen Folk. I'll talk about that next week. But it's like, oh, okay. if I was really smart, I would just do a bunch of cowls because <laughs> they're, they're fast, they're easy. They're only one size. One size, yeah. That is really 
big though? Does it stay? It would go over my shoulders. It's wide and it would go. Oh I yeah, it, I think because it would we're go. small, but. It, uh... Oh okay, I guess if you were, because Vaughn asked me to make him a cowl, but I don't think you'd want something with um, Star Wars on it. But mm-hmm. I, I'm did... thinking about lining it. Okay, as speaking well. of color charts and me being obsessed with, my... I made some with my cat's face. So, but it's like several colors. Can you make a chart for Odin? I could. I want to make him a stocking. So, but I sound like this. <gasps> I should the make weirdest one of Lulu. person. Oh my god! Can you make me one of Lulu? I can make. Just send me a picture of her straight on, and I can make a Lulu. I thing. seriously hope that Erica's not watching this because he, he does he watch he our does podcast. Watch it. Does he watch it into the second hour? <laughs> yeah. Does he? Yeah. Well, I, I can cut that out if you want, so that he doesn't know. No, you can leave it in. I'm just okay. like, <sighs> we'll yeah. see. Okay. Um. I'm not going to be like, don't watch it, because then he'll watch it, because he's obstinate. Um, but yeah, Murphy has a... I think I showed you before, but I, I love I, it I made if you a could face. help me make yeah. mm-hmm. that, because yeah, I am awful at making it translate, because also I wouldn't mind like a side profile, but we'll uh, Just send me a picture, and okay. it, it won't... It'll be bi- bigger. That's fine. It's, I want to make an actual stocking, and I'll have it be like for air. You might have to overstitch. That's fine. Okay. Because um, yeah, I, I've, I've had like... I ordered a painting of her. Oh. And uh, yeah, as much as like we love Freya, Eric was broken by that, and so I made sure to I understand. like be make the biggest deal about it. She'll always have a place in our home. We have like this little corner for her and Jasper because they were buddies. If you guys remember when we first got her, she was obsessed with him. Yeah. Um, and I'm getting this little because um, right now they're on our mantle, and I want to get this little corner, a shelf that you put in the corner. And I want it to be more of like a built-in, so I'd actually put it into the wall. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, I'm going to be having them both there. And Eric keeps laughing. He's like, we're just going to keep getting more dogs. And so our entire mantelpiece is going to be like a... <laughs> Eventually. It's a, it's a um, what do you like call a, that? A like little a memorial or um, a ofrenda. A what? An ofrenda. That's not the word I was thinking of. Oh, it's, um, I think it's just in Mexican culture, but it's also in Eric's uh, what am culture I as well. It's like when you have a candles lit and... Like for a wake? Okay, I'm getting old. I am having a hard time with the words lately. Well, a friend is basically um, a table with candles or a place Not in your a home monument, but like to a, oh my God, memorialize I can't think your of family. Name. So you have pictures of the family who is deceased, mm-hmm. and then that's what Day of the Dead is to like celebrate I'm their like lives. An altar, so they, almost. Yeah. yeah. I that's, hope I'm the using word? the right word by a friend. I don't or know. A friend. I have no idea. I don't know if it's gendered or not. It probably um, means something nasty. No, my my fake word. I'm I'm hoping that's it. Um, because yeah, Eric's family is from El Salvador, and apparently in South America they have a very similar uh, custom with that. Even though I don't think they necessarily because uh they're sp- like Spain Spanish, and I think it's different with Day of the Dead. But over the years and cross culturally, I think that is something that they still do celebrate. But his family has something similar like that in their house. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so, so that's normal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think um, Hispanic culture is honestly many cultures other than us are very beautiful with how they celebrate death. I, I've seen a lot of that. In fact, I saw a culture the other day on a show I was watching where they actually like dig up the body and. Okay. Have you heard of that? Where they um, bring, like, the uh, skull, and they bring it out into the street in, like, a case. Oh, no, I don't know that and one. And they celebrate, and they put, people bring, like, gifts and put, like, money next to the Aww. skull. Or, like, if it was a smoker, they might give them a pack of pack cigarettes. cigarettes. Mm-hmm. It was actually really cool. I've seen that with, um, new, mm. I can't even think about it. Oh, what is it? We were watching something, uh, a documentary on it not too, too long ago. New Guinea? It may be New Guinea, actually. Okay. Um, where they actually take the entire body back out. Yeah. That's... And, like, they're in the coffin, but mm-hmm. they they bring presents and they, like, clean it up, get, offer new clothes to the body. I think that was stuff. similar, but they I think also... it is New Guinea. And then don't they keep, like, the... The head, the skull in the house after I don't a few know years. That. I don't think that. Um, so it might was, be. It's just. It's just different. We're than probably what we just used pulling to. stuff out of our, our butts right now, but <laughs> um, and hopefully not generalizing everyone at the same time. No, it's, but I, I think, do think, I think it's, it's fascinating. I think it's beautiful it how beautiful. other cultures um, show respect, immortalize mm-hmm. basically the people. Yep. And like keep that um, their memory alive mm-hmm. by celebrating them once a year. And so not saying that we're doing anything like that, but having like a little memorial. 
up there for for our dogs and stuff. I think it's healthy, actually. They're able to um, know that any, you know, they they know that this is, like in our culture, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. So once they die, then a lot of times it's, people look down upon you if you're constantly bringing their memories back up and sad over them. But they, Mm -hmm. their, their culture knows that in a year they're going to be able to celebrate Mm -hmm. that person again. And I think that's really cool. I think that's awesome. But, um, but yeah, that was I, the last thing I'm working on. Yeah, <laughs> or that I finished. I think that's all I have. So I have a lot. A of, I have longer. a lot of goodies right now. There. Yeah, I want to see. Your I did want to give you something because I went to Arkansas Yarn Co. not too too long ago for a trunk show. I like show. Arkansas Yarn. I love them, Lori. There's so everyone many. there. Everyone there, Jazz. They have my yarn there too. Yeah, yeah. We're both in there in Alaska too, actually. Oh, good. Yeah, that's right. She was there yeah. before I was. Um, so yeah, we have yarn in their shop, but I went down there for their yarn crawl, um, in July, actually over my birthday and well, the day after my birthday, but still, and it was just so much fun. But while I was there, I, uh, I grabbed some stuff for you. You're so sweet. I didn't even get you a birthday present except for these socks that aren't finished. Didn't you? No, I was going to say, so I got you Uh their little yarn crawl. Oh my gosh. That's so cute. And then I got you this. This is from the sexy knitter. Oh, I like the sexy knitter. I, I bought it. And them. it's a cute little triangle bag, which honestly, I've never I, seen one like I this. don't know how functional it is for me, okay. but I love the fabric so much. So you put your like stuff a in it. It's like a and sock. Then, but then do you carry it and knit at the same time? I don't think you carry a knit. It's just the project bag. Okay. Oh, it's really pretty, though. It's different. I really like it. I'm just, yeah, I, I'm still on the fence about like having that kind of like pyramid type. That's a different shape. Yeah. Very different. Yeah. But cool. I am using one. <laughs> I have a brown one for me, but I know with you, with your red, with you like, like your kitchen and stuff, I'm just like, I'm going to get her That's a red cool. one. Well, thank you. Uh-huh. That's beautiful. Thank you. So she was also doing a trunk show that weekend. So I'm like, I'm going to grab one of those for her, for mom. Show me some of your goodies. I didn't, I don't okay. have anything to show this week. So oh, I was just going to show a couple of my, um, the rest of my, well, not the rest, but uh, some of my favorite uh, autumn colors that I came Are out with. Are they new? Mm-hmm. So recently I have um, Haunted Leaf Pile. That's awesome. I really love this one, but I love it more with these two next to it. Yeah, that's beautiful. So I have Cunning Little Fox and Cozy Cardigan, which I just wanted a neutral. It's really pretty. It's a light, like, I don't even know what to call it. Buttery or like a peachy. It's almost like a a very muted toffee. Yes. Very, very, very very muted toffee. It's really pretty. I'm so happy with it. Strangely enough, like, it, it always, like, floors me. I'm like, I worked so long on this color, and it's speckled and saturated, and then I put this one in, and it sells out. I'm like, what about, what about the other one? I can't figure you guys out. <laughs> you guys are, you're in a dang ball, and I love it. Mm-hmm. Just keep me guessing. I'm going to keep working at it. Um, but I do love these three together. I think these, these would Those be look really the perfect, good. like, autumn shawl. You know, it would be really pretty if you had a light color sweater, and then you did color work in those colors. <gasps> oh, that's a really good idea. That's pop. I, that's my biggest yeah, issues. Yeah. I always put together colors that don't pop. I'd probably do this as. Well, I do like this thing. I mean, I just because time. just because it pops. I'm yeah, always you could do the, concerned you could do with them. these popping next to each other as much. I think, it, I, I I think it's that. high enough. Co- it's such. It's so tricky with color. It is. Work. It is tricky with it's color. So tricky. Well, you're using so speckled, part, especially. Especially because you're like, oh, I want it to be within the vein of like the colorway, yeah. but you cannot have anything that is the same color within yeah. this yarn to be in your contrast color basically because it'll just it'll it, it still just contrast but it, it mutes out. it a little bit yeah so i love these three i'm also pretty obsessed with my wandering woods color that's pretty too this was last year's autumn but it was at, right at the end and i actually dyed it up for our friend tanya because she wanted one that was kind of themed after the elf king of um not Loth- Lord, it's in lord of the rings uh, mm-hmm. well it's in the hobbit technically it's um the forests of where the spiders all are. Oh, okay. Yeah, that king. I don't know. I can't say his name. Spider king. Sure. Spider forest king. Legolas is dad. Okay. But, because he is such like a cool... Orlando Bloom's dad. Orlando Bloom's dad. I like it. Yeah, so those ones together. Very autumnal. I'm really loving. Um, my two from my autumn collection that I did not bring last week. I know what color this is. This is very champagne. Mm, it looks okay. like champagne. It comes okay. across pretty true, but it looks it like does, champagne. Yeah. That's beautiful. Oh, that's a good idea. Or that's a good It looks knowledge. bubbly, like a bubbly. Okay, so this one is, did I grab the right ones? Okay, 
So this is Midnight Rituals. I, like I did show this one last week. Did you? Just okay. kidding. So Midnight Rituals, you guys already saw. Moonlit Promises. That's an, Did you show that one last week, too? I don't think so. Because I'm... That sounds like a Victoria's Secret scent, too. Dang it. Yeah, I did. Okay, okay. so ignore okay. me, ignore me. This I one like is Mothman Conspiracies. You have not shown that one. Not shown this. I do have a cryptid or campfires and cryptids collection. And this is Mothman Conspiracies. And like within it. that collection, I also have Siren Graveyard. That's pretty. That's really pretty. It's very similar to Gray when blues. I first started dyeing yarn. My Serial Mermaid color. Uh huh. That was really popular. But I lost it. Oh man! <laughs> so. You know that's thinking back to the, some of the old colors. I should bring some of those back just to, for fun. I know there's some of them. Just lot. like it's I really enjoyed that. And you have all of them written down. I cannot right. find my little purple book. Holy crap, Tristan! I have one little tiny notebook that's this big. And I know I've seen it. I think it's behind my whole dye station. But when I, I moved into my own. location, it's like an actual like built-in countertop that we just that's ripped off the wall and moved to a different side. So I think it's behind there somewhere. I put mine on 3x5 cards, and I've been so paranoid about losing them. I bought a fire safe, like, it's four file cards oh my God. with a lock on them. You have to. Because what if somebody was to come to my house and steal all my recipes? I know. And no one would be able to de decipher they, my no, notebook at all. It's such chicken scratch. It's coded. At all. It's like, I also have, like, written in there, um, it's like, just a little, and by a little, I mean a fucking little Tristan. <laughs> and so that's like what's written on my card. So nobody is going to know anything. Mine are number coded. A lot of mine I do numbers, like where to put it on my skein. I have my skeins. I don't. Like their body parts on my skeins. Like what they, I'm where they are. Yeah. Well, that's the only way I can really remember where I put the actual speckles. Because yeah. you, don't, you don't just take speckles and just put it all over. So, some of them you do. But some of them you want speckles in a specific color. Oh, no, spot. I know. Or you want to pour dyes and colors in a certain anyway. I love how we dye so different. Like, so I'm just like, yeah, I know. That's the way to do it. You don't do it that way? No. You just put it all on the whole skein. No, over. no, I have specific areas, but I don't write it down like that. It's, oh, it's, oh, yeah. It's yeah. very different. You're like, I want it here, here, here. I'm like, I just, if I write it down in it? like a certain oh, order and yeah, stuff, yeah. I know exactly where on the skein it's going to be. So that's why I'm saying nobody's going to know. Well, I, to that's what I it. used to do. But then I started forgetting what it meant. Like if I would say on the top, well, how, how much on the top? The top third? You know, oh, top, yeah, no. top section? Top. I've been consistently like That's good. chaotic <laughs> since I started dyeing yarn. So I actually do know what it means. That's awesome. And it's like press in after five minutes and stuff. I'm like, okay, or like it's this one color, so I know I have to wait on it regardless. Yep, yep. So, it's so fun to learn how different it's people so do things. It's so crazy. It's so weird. So different. And I have some other colors, but I'll probably just show them uh, next time because I'll bring my um, Ophelia Hall sweater so you guys can see oh, what yeah. I'm working on with that. Um, yeah. Also, oh, what can I do with these? You have. Oh, I want you to show those. Yes. 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 So I do have a couple stitch markers, uh, stitch marker sets too, um, for Halloween. So oh, I got a little that's skeleton dude. Cute. I also have this in like voodoo doll centerpiece so cute and my favorite um winter stitch marker that will be coming back now is just cute little color work sweater that, i saw that sitting there it's like a gingerbread sweater it's and so it's I'll very show you how like to do a color it. work one uh-huh looks oh well, it looks like argyle it looks like, like yeah. an argyle sweater so it's like it's uh, it's like frosting on top of it and the bottom's like a gingerbread color so it's, it's like so my cute. gingerbread sweater and then i just finally finished and perfected this coralline stitch marker Oh, I love that. Hey, I saw some, uh, I totally there lost my needle. Oh no, it's I okay. think it was on your chair, right? It just hit my chair, and it's fine, I'll get it in a minute. Um, I saw some Wednesday cutters. Oh yeah, yeah. They're bigger than you're thinking though. I wondered if they were too big. I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to show you. Cause we use clay cutters, so it's cheating, some but Some of not. them, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I don't. This one was, but not. So this so one, see, even with cutters, you have to do a lot of your own improvising oh God, you and, so much. and uh, adding things. You have to so. Do so much. It just makes it easier. It's more like a template. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's so cool. my little Coraline stitch marker. It. And I'm thinking this next week I'll be able to, but I want to make like a Coraline themed sock set, maybe a little tiny box. Cause I want to have it be like under a hundred dollars. I know a lot of my sip and knit boxes can get pricey with just like how much I end up putting in yeah, them. You put a lot of good stuff in them. I do put a lot of good stuff in them, but I I know it doesn't reach like it's not in everybody's price point that they can afford, mm -hmm. especially during this time of the year where everyone's like getting ready to spend all the money at yarn festivals and stuff. Um, Hopefully, I hope so. I'm, I'm going. Serious. I'm going to spend. That's right. I always put it, yeah. I always put aside a bunch 
for those shows because I love seeing what everyone else is bringing. That's right. But um, so I think these stitch markers are probably going to go into those sock sets. I don't know if I'm actually going to have them available on their own. So, but I wanted to show them. Did they take a lot really of work? Good. Yeah, they did. I have they some did. like that too. But I'm just I'm so, I made some last year that turned out so god awful. So oh, we're still just starting. Well, I have had this clay cutter for like over a year and a half. And um, when I first made them, they like look like possessed dolls. So I still may sell them. Hey, that um, works. Because I really like them. But I was still using um, different techniques to. Uh, basically, you can use like cornstarch to make it so your cutters don't stitch, mm -hmm. or you can use like plastic wrap and put it over there before I you start that cutting. One, but I'm going to. It's really good for making things rounded. So if you do like something where you want like a stone in the center or something, and you want to make a stone, and you want to make it rounded. You can put the plastic wrap over it and then use the clay cutter on top of it and then just pull the plastic Because it pushes it down. It curls it mm -hmm, as you're cutting it. I've just found that using a shit ton of cornstarch works really well. It does. Or you can get your clay cutter wet. I tried that and it didn't work well, for me. The ones that you're doing are so thick. They are. I, I don't like think them. that they would work. I think they're gorgeous. I, like I love them, them. But I don't think they would work with the water. But there but is the that water trick. doesn't stay. It like doesn't stay in one spot. Yeah. No, I know. It just beads up, so it doesn't. That it wasn't yeah, helping. Yeah, it's, it's tricky. <laughs> I've even tried. I even tried putting it on the clay. Anyway. Yeah, ahead. you have to do so many things. But I think uh, my biggest thing is putting it against a ceramic tile. Actually, makes it so it doesn't pull up as much. So ceramic tiles are great, and you can cook on the ceramic tiles. That's that's the best thing. So, be so you don't have to maneuver it after or anything. But um. But those are so. Cute. Yeah, it was so bad last year, and I'm so glad I actually perfected it. And I, I think I am going to be putting just some random stitch markers or goodies into the Coraline Advents just because I've had a blast making yeah, them. Yeah. Even that's though they weren't supposed to be included. People will but love that. Like, I think it'll still be fun. But yeah, so I want to have a Coraline sock set. And I'll probably get that up this next week at some point. That's good. That's yeah. good. But They're I don't fun. Do you have any other things to show? Honestly, that's, that's really it. This is a little bit longer. It is. <laughs> well, I went on a couple of tangents. I'm sorry. That's okay. Um, they can watch it in two parts yeah. if it's too long. <laughs> But yeah, anyway. I'm just yeah. So mainly we're gonna, just looking forward to fall. Oh yeah, our right. sessions right now is just fall. Fall is it? We're obsessed with it, and I'm gonna bring some more stuff next week to show that is more fall related. Uh, and so. I know that we are both committing to. I would love to know um, some recommendations because we need to cast on a Rhinebeck sweater, Mom. That's I was gonna ask about that. If I don't, I don't know what's kind of the, all the buzz right now. <laughs> like I know you've got some coming out. Yeah. Um, but are there others out there that people are excited about making? I'm really curious. I, I really are am those curious days of, like, gone? a cardigan. Are those days gone yeah. where there's, like, I still remember when uh, 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 Caitlin's first sweater, the Sunset Highway Highway one yeah. came out, and that was so big at Rhinebeck. And, but I don't know if that if people still have, like, a big... I think it's Andrea because... Mowry does. She does that oh, every yeah, year, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah, because she has a meetup, and there's, like, 300 yeah. people on the hill yeah. above us, and we're just like... So if you're going to Rhinebeck, let us know what sweater do, pattern you're making. Yeah. Um, or Say, I have a couple ideas and okay. thinking of a couple of things that I might want to cast on. Good. Yeah. Um, but I I don't design cardigans yet. I mean, I have one cardigan. Um, but I really would love, like, a thicker cable-type cardigan. The Grandpa sweater? Yeah, but not the Gramps cardigan. I know that's that probably going to be recommended. Is that Andrea Mowry's one? I think that's Tin Candidates. Oh, um, because I think Andrea has another one, too. Does she? She has one, too. I don't know well, if it was if it if it was your style or not though. Oh, yeah, probably not. Oh. Um, so yeah, if you're going right, even if you're not, if you have any recommendations, please post them below. Cause, I mean, we read those comments a ton. We do. <laughs> so, Thank you so much for all your comments. Yeah, last we're week. really we're really loving the interaction because I feel like a, a large part, especially with you know everything that's happened over the past few years, I think it's been really hard to see a lot of community community aspect online as much anymore. Cause honestly, the whole like dynamic has changed. People Online. are afraid. I think, I think people are afraid to comment. We should talk about that more mm. next time. Next I time. think next time that's a good topic. Uh, I would, I mean, our knitting community is totally different than it was when we first started knitting. Yeah. So. I, I would love to just bring it back to just being able to chat and have that, like, community bonding. So if you have any recommendations for sweater or cardigan yeah. patterns, please we, put them below. I would, I would love to get some more ideas on that. Yeah. But other than that, I think that's all we have. Yeah. And so two weeks in a row. Mm -hmm. Can we make it three? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We'll be here next week. Absolutely. We are committed. We are. It's so. it's in our schedules now. It <laughs> so is. I'm excited to be back and doing it. 
full time again. Yeah. Because yeah, I I don't know about you, but I do miss that interaction, the community aspect. And now that everyone's getting out again, going to festivals again, right. I think it's the perfect time to get back into it, so we can yep. build think, those relationships again. Yep. And I have some other things to talk about next week with that. I think that that'll be a great topic. So Absolutely. Don't forget. Okay. I'll write it down. Okay. But thanks for stopping by, you guys. Yeah. Good yeah. to see you all.